of the Silk Road, um, which is an online drug marketplace or marketplace. It's an online mostly free market where drugs are one of the products that are yeah. sold, probably the majority of them. And, um, you know, he was nabbed. It's the evidence against them sketchy because you're talking about a world where this is um, all done through the Onion router, which means that... Uh, That's an anonymizing system for right. the internet. There's a lot of anonymization that has gone on, and it's going to be very difficult to prove who is whom and those kind of things. It may be that they can prove that he has some uh, connection, but uh, you know they have to prove that he is the guy and uh, you know all kinds of things. So they've got a, a very sort of interesting, tough case ahead of them. So we've been following along on this Silk Road case uh, quite a bit. In fact, we've been following the Silk Road before there was a case, um, before, you know, just back when it was this phenomenon. Uh, and it still is, by the way. Silk Road 2.0 uh, came out. As you know, if you've been listening to the show for a while, the Silk Road was raided uh, back in 2013 in October. So we're actually almost to, uh, to a year since that happened. Ross mm. Ulbricht has been in jail for almost a year. At but he doesn't point, like that. Awaiting his trial. Trial hasn't happened yet. That's expected in November. Speedy trial, remember. You're yeah. guaranteed this by the Constitution. You they're, get a speedy trial. They're getting usually, right on that, Mark. Usually takes about three years to get a jury trial to you. And that's one of the one of the many things that is broken in this country. Yeah. Um, they talk about... Uh, you, you know, they talk about we have a constitution. You don't have a constitution if they don't follow it. The judicial system is supposed to get you a trial within a, spe a speedy amount of time. Of course, that's another failing of the constitution. They didn't say 60 days, 90 days, seven days or whatever. They, you know, they didn't say anything. So now you have police, uh, law enforcement arresting people and then building their case. That's not the way it's supposed to be. A person should be <laughs> arrested only after the case is built. All right, let's get into the update on this case, because as Ross awaits his day in court, or what will likely be several days, uh, I would guess, as Ross awaits those days in court, uh, his attorney, who is not a cheap attorney, uh, you can go and help the family pay for these attorneys by going to freeross.org. His attorney has filed a new motion in this case. We'll give you the details on what that is. But first, got Aaron on the line, and Aaron is on Skype. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, good evening. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? There's um, something that has come up a few times, and it's an invention by Tesla that was supposed to broadcast free energy to the Earth. Okay. Yeah, um, I've heard about this. So I'm skeptical. So, as in, I have a little background with this. What it was, was he was in, there was two companies, one funding Marconi and one funding Tesla to produce uh, the first radio. Right. Marconi beat, beat into the punch because Tesla's idea was a little grander. He wanted to broadcast up into the ionosphere and use the air as an insulator, but it would allow radio transmission to the entire Earth at the same time. So anyone everywhere could listen to this radio broadcast around the whole Earth by putting an antenna up huh. and receiving this signal from the ionosphere. Is that possible? Which, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the problem, one of the problems with it was is that you would also draw down electricity, which wasn't free. It was just that he was pumping it up there. And as you drew down electricity, there was no real way to gauge that. There was no way to charge people for it. So it'd be like you'd be able to plug into the Wi-Fi anywhere on Earth, but how do you charge people if it's just being broadcast like that? So you ended up with this decentralized network of radio markets, as you probably know, where radio only reaches so far and you have people in different markets and it's a high redundancy. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the Internet, they were able to charge at the plug end where people could plug in the internet, so they centralized it all. I was wondering if you had any opinion on how this might have affected the power of the government. So by having this decentralized radio network, I think it helped free speech a lot, and we're seeing the re-centralization of this with the internet. And uh, I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts on that. I'm confused by, uh, by what you're saying here. You're saying the internet is re-centralizing sure. communications? I would agree with that. Yeah. How is the internet centralizing communications? I mean, it would seem to me there are more, now more nodes than ever who can broadcast whatever it is, or you know, narrowcast as it were, uh, target you know, send out whatever sort of content that they want to. And the radio business is the business that seems centralized to me, given that there's a government agency that oversees which radio stations are allowed to exist. So up in, I mean. The FCC is relatively new. At one point, you'd, 
pirate radio stations, and even today they can exist anywhere. But ICANN controls all the domain space in the entire network of the internet. You can't have a website without going through ICANN. This is the central they, registry. I see where you're coming from. This is yeah, the central yeah. registry of websites, the DNS services. Each uh, ISP, each internet service provider, has a DNS service that hooks into this network that you're talking about run by ICANN to uh, to essentially download a, a, a basically an internet phone book of when you put in freetalklive.com there's a web there's an IP address that's behind that and the DNS service provides that lookup service so when when you on your laptop or desktop or smartphone type in freetalklive.com your phone queries your ISP's DNS and the DNS has this information about oh Here's the IP address for that website. It's all a you know an instantaneous instantaneous process, but that's what's going on behind the scenes. So I see what you're saying. You're saying I can this in this kind of centralized registry is a point of weakness for the internet. And about that, you are absolutely correct. Well, let's not forget that uh, we're moving from decentralized as far as information storage. Uh, it used to be that you'd keep all this stuff on all your information, your files, and everything on um, on your laptop. But now it's essentially moved to people are keeping things online. Um, Google offers this drive thing, and there's it's just an offer. You don't have to keep things online. There are no, still... no, no. The only claim has been made is that centralization is occurring. Uh -huh. Not why. Not I didn't claim right. that there was a centralization whip being well um, being wielded by a central centralizer. Well, I simply is, said that things are centralized. There are different online clouds though. There's yep. you know Google's and Amazon's and yep. you know other That's a lot more centralized than a whole than millions of laptops, mm -hmm. wouldn't you agree? Well with Dropbox Yes for or instance, no <laughs> well, there's it's just an option again. I mean, yes, with Dropbox, it is your a centralizing option your, people are me, using. With Dropbox, your files are still on your computer. I mean, I understand Dropbox has now. I guess they got Condoleezza Rice working for them or something like that. So again, if you don't want your files to be read by Dropbox or Google, then don't put them there. I don't really see what the issue is with that. I think the ICANN thing, though, is a big... I think that's a legitimate concern, and that's why I think that the name coin is a cool idea. I, are you familiar with that, uh, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I run a Namecoin node. Right, so for our um, listeners who don't know, Namecoin is like an iteration of Bitcoin. It's a modified sort of code. There's all these competing altcoins out there competing with Bitcoin, this decentralized currency. Namecoin actually does something special. It's not just money. It actually allows you to register sort of this alternative domain name in, inside this alternative domain name system uh, or DNS service. And that means that you can have a domain name that exists outside of ICANN, and you could access those uh, those domain names through you know pro uh, products like Meowbit, for instance, and other things out there that are similar. So, I mean, there's a way around, there's a workaround for ICANN, but obviously most people aren't using that. You know, this is a, a niche sort of thing right now. So, how do we get away from ICANN? I guess is the big question. Do you have any proposals? Um, that's I guess that's what I was trying to get at is originally there was an economic incentive to decentralize because no one could afford to just broadcast free internet radio signals to the whole earth. But now we've been driven this other way economically by these large companies centralizing power and now there's starting to be a push and I think the only real push is the fact that the government's onerous and people are getting scared of them. It's what's pushing us to decentralize. Cool. Thanks for the thoughts tonight, Aaron. I appreciate well, hearing from you. There's also things like sunspots and uh, you know ca catastrophes that occur, EMPs. Yep. I'm not sure what that has anything to do with any of the conversation we just had. Well, because it, uh, you know, a desire to decentralize. Um, when when things are centralized, it's easier for them to be destroyed. Sure. Toll free number is 855 450 free. Would love to hear alternatives to ICAM besides Namecoin. That's the only one I know of. It's Free Talk Live. Far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Are you searching for your soul? Attention. Have you been in a serious automobile accident? then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously Seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800 648 9173. 800 648 9173. 800 648 9173. That's 800 648 9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. You just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data, meaning that before... Whatever you're doing online reaches your internet service provider. It's encrypted, so your ISP will no longer have any idea which website you're visiting or what you're doing anymore. And you can start the process by going to download their free application at proxpn.com slash FTL. That's uh, available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android. Linux users, you don't actually have to, you do not actually have to download the app. There's a different setup involved for Linux, so contact their support department. It's actually pretty simple. proxpn.com slash FTL. You can go there and get started with ProXPN. They make it so easy to protect your privacy on the internet, but you do have to put a little effort in, like go download the software and install it. proxpn.com slash FTL. And when you're ready, you can upgrade to their premium 
Premium account and get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, and the ability to privately torrent. Plus, you can get past regionally blocked websites as well. So one account works for all of your devices. No need to have a separate account for each uh, device. Go and get the details at proxpn.com slash FTL. And don't forget our discount code to get 20% off the price of the premium account. That code is FTL20. That's FTL20. And you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And they don't keep records of your online habits at all. So again, proxpn.com slash FTL. Uh, as we continue here, we were going to tell you about what the latest is in the Silk Road case. Ross Ulbricht is the young man in his, what, late 20s, I think? who is accused of operating an underground drug marketplace, among other things. You can get some fake IDs there, too, but for the most part, it's uh, it's drugs. And even, they do sell some legal stuff there as well. Silk Road was taken out in October by the feds. They took the server down, uh, but it popped back up. Silk Road 2.0 came back a month later, not helmed by the same Dread Pirate Roberts, the original owner, of the, owner and operator of the site called himself Dread, Dread Pirate Roberts, and they are alleging now, the federal government, that Ross Ulbricht is Dread Pirate Roberts. So All of the Dread Pirate Roberts, because there was also sort up of... Up until the raid. I don't think they're alleging he's the new Dread Pirate Roberts, who is actually right. no longer with the new site. That person bailed out on the site. But the what we had heard with Silk Road at one point before the raid was is that there had been more than one Dread Pirate Roberts. That's true. There was the Forbes article, which was an, the first interview Dread Pirate Roberts ever granted, where that Dread Pirate Roberts claimed to be the second Dread Pirate Roberts, not the original one. So, so whether that was true or not is another question. We don't know if that you know if DPR in the interview was being totally honest. Uh, how could we, we ever know? know? Well, if it that's turns the whole out point of anonymity, right? <laughs> if it turns out Ross is the man, then we might get the full story someday. But I don't know that you're uh, ever going to get the full story. I don't necessarily trust what they're going to introduce in it as evidence. Yeah, that's true, and that's actually kind of the point of this motion to dismiss that has been filed. Now, remember, there was a motion to dismiss filed previously about the money involved in the case, basically saying that it's not, you know, Bitcoin wasn't money, the IRS has ruled that it's property, and so therefore money laundering laws don't apply. The well, judge and I kicked think that, that out, of yeah, course. The, the judge kicked that out, um, there's no doubt about it, but I think that this is, what's really important is, um, in that case, because I, I disagree with the judge's statement, uh, because it's, uh, what was money at the time when Dread Private Roberts was doing this? Not what it is today, because Bitcoin has gone from not money in the government size to money in the government size to not money in the government size to money in the government size. It's amazing. They've done it. They, they've moved around. We, how are you supposed to know? There was a time when we would say on air, well, as far as the government's concerned, Bitcoin isn't money. We've said that on air because it was true three years ago mm. when the, the government hadn't recognized Bitcoin at all. Well, regardless, here's the latest news from Wired.com. The Department of Justice sees its takedown of the billion-dollar Silk Road black market as a massive, victorious drug bust. Ross Ulbricht, the alleged creator of that anonymous contraband bazaar, now wants to cast this uh, case in a different light as a landmark example of the government trampling privacy rights in the digital world. In a pretrial motion filed in the case late Friday night, Ulbricht's lawyers laid out a series of arguments to dismiss all charges in the case based on Ulbricht's Fourth Amendment protections against warrantless searches of his digital property. As early as the FBI's initial discovery of servers in Iceland hosting the site on the Tor Anonymity Network, seemingly without obtaining a search warrant from a judge, Ulbricht argues that law enforcement violated his constitutional right to privacy, tainting all further evidence against him dug up in the investigation that followed. Quote, The electronically stored information and other material seized and searched has been contaminated at its source and at several later points along the way, rendering the direct and indirect product of those searches and seizures, in essence, the entire product of the investigation itself, to be inadmissible. This according to, unquote, according to the 102-page memo accompanying the motion. Quote, Thus, the Fourth Amendment and relevant statutes require suppression of the fruits of the searches and seizures and any evidence or other information derived therefrom. So basically, the claim is that by grabbing the, uh, the information from the server in the way that they did, that they botched their case from the outset. You know... I like <laughs> I, I like it when people take this tax, but from what I've seen recently, the government doesn't believe in loopholes anymore. Uh, the the judicial system 
it's not interested in whether or not they followed the law. They're just interested in finding people guilty. Because over and over again, we've seen situations. I thought that the uh, the Bradley Manning, uh, Pri- Private Manning, now Chelsea Manning, mm-hmm. um, that situation where they made the point that the commander in chief, the uh, the the most powerful military person in America, proclaimed that uh, the Private Manning was guilty, and he did. Like there's there's audio and video of him saying it, of, of Barack Obama saying this, and so therefore. He tainted the jury pool, which was all of these officers that are going to be underneath um, you know, the president. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the highest ranking officer in America tells the other ranking officers what he believes, and therefore that taints the whole case. I thought that was incredible. This is brilliant. This is a brilliant act, and they should have to throw the case out as a result. Nope, they don't do that. And I don't think it's going to happen in this one either, even if they're right. Yeah, I also am a skeptic that uh, the judge is just going to whisk their uh, her pen and sign this one away. I mean, she, in her response to the initial motion to dismiss that we talked about before, uh, where they were arguing about the money, the judge did not seem even at all open to well, considering removing this case. These judges want to be higher-ranking judges, right? Yeah. You don't get to move up the government judicial system by ruling against the government. Mm-hmm. I mean, within the uh, the another thing that happened in the Bradley Manning situation is, is there was these weeks, this long time testifying about how uh, Private Manning was tortured inside a U.S. brig. And the evidence was there. The judge found that uh, she was tortured there and gave... Like, two weeks extra time served on, like, a 35-year sentence. We'll come back with more, because there's more detail on what's actually happening here with Ross's uh, motion to dismiss, based on basically saying that the feds blew their case by not getting a warrant to search in the first place. We'll tell you more about that here in a moment. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can share your thoughts, whether it's on the Silk Road or whatever you want, on Free Talk Live. It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. An HB extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 bottles, 30 days summer giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contact test banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 bottle, 30 days summer giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. Uh, rumor has it there's a new blockchain app coming out. I have to tell you, getting uh, word really, oh, hey, yeah. hey, lady, you're not supposed to be on our show. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, the... Uh, <laughs> Ever the professional. Yeah. I love those websites where the just video just automatically starts playing on you when you didn't ask for that to happen. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks for that, programmers. Love, love that. that feature. Thank you. Um, anyway... Blockchain. That is a great uh, thing. The, the blockchain app, blockchain.com, is where you can go to get it for your smartphone, Android, or iPhone based. And I, I kind of griped a little bit last night because I had some, I had a difficulty with a couple of people who installed the blockchain app and it just wouldn't set up right for them to open a new wallet. And I, I sent feedback to the blockchain folks. They got back to me relatively quickly. And it was actually Mandrick who uh, wrote me back, who we've had on the show a, a few times in the past. Quite a few, yeah. Um, he used to make baklava. Now he's a Bitcoin guy, which is pretty cool. Uh, so he got back to me. He said they are working v- feverishly on an updated version of their brand new app with some bug fixes. Uh, so that is coming soon. Blockchain.com. Most For the most part, the app works with most people. Uh, but uh, if, if you're having trouble, just be patient. They're going to uh, crank a new one out here pretty soon. Go and get it right now over at Blockchain.com. That, again, is Blockchain.com. And, of course, we're talking sort of tangentially about Bitcoin, this wonderful decentralized currency that uh, is sort of taking the world by storm. Dell Computer, Wikipedia just started taking Bitcoin, and even local businesses in a lot of different places all around the world are taking Bitcoin. And there's also underground black market users for Bitcoin. That's what the Silk Road was and still is. Uh, The Silk Road was basically a way to go and buy drugs and other interesting things without asking any government bureaucrats' permission and without having to go and deal with some scummy, shifty street dealer who... Who knows what drug you're going to get? Who knows if you're going to get robbed? Uh, so on and so forth. The black market can be a pretty scary place to do business in real life. Indeed. But the Silk Road, uh, while it wasn't perfect, you know, there were still some people on there trying to scam people out of money and things like that. Well, it wasn't perfect. There was a rating system. So you could tell who the really good players were, who the really good uh, dealers were. So you couldn't be threatened with violence into doing business with uh, somebody in particular. No, no one would know who you are. And so and you wouldn't know who the dealer is. Therefore, when somebody's rating went down because they scammed somebody, you're not going to do business with somebody. This isn't like the you know the the drug world of uh, that we were used to up until Silk Road. So Silk Road really did amazing things uh, for the black market. It created a place where people could do business with one another anonymously, but still have a uh, record, you know, still have ratings about their anonymous transactions. Right. And what that means is, is that you have an account, 
but that account doesn't identify you specifically. Correct. So you get an account, it's a bunch of random numbers. You know that that's your random number account, and you have the password to that account, but that account doesn't say, you know, this is Joe Smith's account. There's no random numbers involved. There's a, just there's a name on the account. All right, so it, then... Whatever you want. You're right. So your Mixel Plick uh, 512. There you go. Fine. Um, and then, but, you know, who's to say that Mixel Plick is Mixel Plick? And Hopefully that's not your last name and your area code. So <laughs> you'd want to create a name that isn't connected to you. Um, You're anyway, right about that. Silk Road's done an amazing thing. They've made the, the black market a safer place. People who would have been robbed and beaten and possibly killed in the black market or ripped off, given some sort of bunk product, they have had much better experiences with the Silk Road. Anyway, the heroic... Alleged operator of the Silk Road, uh, Ross Ulbricht, has filed a motion. In well, he's court. only uh, he's only heroic if he operated the. Well, at this Silk point, Road. he's heroically defending himself uh, in court by well, having. He's defending himself because that's all he can do. Yeah. Uh, let's not let's not tarnish the term hero here. They have, he's either an innocent accused yeah. or he's a you know you can use the term hero if that's what you wish. All to right, use. Well, if he is Dread Pirate Roberts, he's a hero for making the black market a better place. You can get behind him by going to freeross.org and contributing to his. Uh, campaign or not campaign but his uh, defense fund because his family is not wealthy and they certainly don't have access to the bitcoins that the feds allegedly seized from ross the, what was it twenty nine thousand bitcoins or something like that that was a lot of money in bitcoins it, yeah no surprise there i i think it's i just don't think they should be taking money from people i mean even how are you going to mount a defense when they take all your money they don't care so here's the latest. Uh, they're filing a motion basically saying the feds botched the case by not getting proper warrants to search the computers in the first place. Uh, and the way they gathered all their evidence was basically wrong, and so therefore all of the evidence should be thrown out by virtue of the fruit of the poison tree uh, doctrine. Let's continue here with a story from Wired.com. The motion that's been filed refers to 14 distinct searches and seizures of Ulbricht's computers, equipment, and online accounts. Beyond the initial tracing of his alleged servers in Iceland, investigators performed several of those surveillance operations with trap-and-trace or pen register orders that don't require the probable cause standard necessary to convince a judge to sign off on a warrant. The warrantless surveillance ops included asking Comcast for information related to Ulbricht's alleged IP address in San Francisco, and even in the cases when investigators did get a warrant before performing their searches, as in the case of a Samsung laptop believed to belong to Ulbricht, as well as his Gmail and Facebook accounts, Ulbricht's defense argues that those warrants were unconstitutional general warrants that allowed a wholesale dump of his private data, rather than allowing the search for a specific piece of information. Quote, many of the warrants constitute the general warrants abhorred by the framers, which led directly to the Fourth Amendment. The wholesale collection and study of Mr. Ulbricht's entire digital history without limitation, expressly sought in the warrants and granted, represent the very type of indiscriminate rummaging that caused the American colonists so much consternation. So what? So basically, they would get the, the king. Um, they would get from the king a uh, a warrant, or from the governor, you know. Of, but I mean, basically, in the name of the king. They would get a warrant to, this person is suspicious and stuff. We'd like to go toss their house. Their, and find uh, whatever we may. Yeah, but we just like to look. We just need to take a look and find out whatever it is they do. And, you know, when you lived in a culture like that and you saw that there were problems with something like that, you would put in place some, uh, you know, some restraints. However, we're 200 and something years from that culture, and people don't know what the, uh, people don't think about. We, we, we live in a culture where people worship the government, where they immediately believe when a prosecutor says that somebody's guilty. They he's done it. He's done it. Yeah. Now you've essentially got to prove that you didn't do it. It's sad. Even a yeah. hundred years ago, you didn't have that in this country. But somehow or another, we've become a nation of sycophants and bit uh, bootlickers, and I don't, I don't know where it came from. So the uh, sort of a real life corollary to this example, just to kind of make it a little more understandable, is the idea of this general warrant versus specific. The idea behind warrants in this country, in the United States is that they're supposed to state specifically what it is the item there or information that they are looking for. Yeah, it's supposed to be specific. And so if in the case of them raiding a home, for instance, they're looking for perhaps uh, a drug, gro drug growing equipment or something. Bloody boots or something. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, you know, they, we think there's marijuana in this house uh, or being grown in this house. So we're looking for marijuana growing equipment. If they are to come across 
you know, uh, something that might be illegal that's in the process that, you know, like a, a marijuana smoking pipe or a, a bag of cocaine, maybe that wouldn't be admissible. Uh, that's probably not the best uh, example, but if they're coming in looking for a person. What about an unregistered gun? <laughs> how, right. How about a person? They're coming in looking for a person. Well, they can't search your coffee table if they're looking for Johnny. Right. They can't search your coffee table if Johnny can't fit in the little drawer that's on your coffee table, right? So that's one example of it. And if they're looking for Johnny and they find a bong, they might be able to confiscate the bong because it's illegal, but they shouldn't be able to charge you with having that bong. That's my understanding. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. <laughs> but is that pretty much your understanding of the idea of a specific warrant versus a general warrant? They don't I'm just sure get to it's go been and... perverted over time. Sure. But that's the idea of it. That's what it's supposed to be about. Uh, so, Ulbricht's memo isn't simply a demand to dismiss the charges against him, which include conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, money laundering, and a kingpin statute often used against mob bosses and drug cartel leaders. It's also a request for more information from prosecutors. Despite the discovery process designed to give defendants a chance to review the evidence against them, the memo says the government still hasn't revealed to Ulbricht or the public many aspects of the investigation. The most crucial of those information gaps is just how the FBI located the Silk Road servers, despite the anonymity protections provided by cryptographic software Tor. And this was the biggest question I had when I first read the uh, the full indictment against Ross was, mm -hmm. how did they discover the location of these servers? Now, there recently was news about Tor possibly having a vulnerability and allegedly them patching it recently. But maybe that was one of the things that was exploited. We don't know, and that's part of what uh, the, def the defense attorneys want to find out. Your thoughts welcome. It's Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads. This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No No Pro risk free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no no. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> <laughs> try No No Pro risk free by calling 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We're talking about the underground drug market known as the Silk Road. More specifically, the man who is alleged to have operated said drug market, or to have been the main operator. There were several people, actually, who were involved as administrators of the site. And in fact, I haven't heard anything about the other three folks that were arrested. Do you remember that, Mark? It was uh, Ross Ulbricht who was arrested and accused of being Dread Pirate Roberts. But then they also arrested three other people a few months later. Yeah, uh, in another I do sweep. remember. Those, those people would be turning state's evidence, all right? Well, I don't know what they're uh, what they're doing or what their status is. There was one of them that was still kind of on the run last I heard. I don't know if they ever caught up to that guy. I don't know what the latest is on those cases, and I'd be interested in hearing maybe, you know, the, the Silk Road does have a forum, and anybody can go there and read it. I haven't gone in a while to uh, to get an update on, you know, various different things, but I'm wondering uh, if anybody out there listening to the show tonight has been keeping up to date on those other cases. What's going on with them? Uh, all we really know about is Ross's case. So that's what we're focusing on right now. Uh, he is alleged to have uh, operated the Silk Road. They're charging him with money laundering. Actually, conspiracy, I think, to to launder money. Conspiracy to traffic in narcotics. And also there was a computer hacking charge, I believe, as well, and a kingpin-related charge. So the latest development in the case is that uh, his attorneys have filed a motion to dismiss, basically claiming the federal government, uh, the the FBI in this case was doing the investigation, that the FBI got general warrants when they did get warrants. They say that in some of the searches, they have 14 separate searches that they identify in this uh, motion to dismiss. Say They say that some of the searches didn't have a warrant and they should have. And they say that other searches that did have a warrant, they were general warrants, meaning that they could just dump all the data and just pour pour over it rather than having to specifically look for certain things like they are supposed to in the United States. Warrants are supposed to specify what it is that's being searched right, for. Right. A general warrant would be unconstitutional. So that's their argument here. And uh, we're going to continue with the latest on this. But I uh, also want to tell you about ModUp.net. You can look into Modafinil if you've been... Needing, uh, needing focus, uh, feeling fatigued, and you need that extra edge when it counts. Students are using modafinil. One out of five students, as a matter of fact, according to some studies, uh, are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits like a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Even businessmen are talking about modafinil from modup.net, how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Over at uh, modup.net, it's affordable for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name, but don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Caveat emptor. And ModUp.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You can get a deal with Bitcoin. I mean, it's already a good deal, but you get a better deal with Bitcoin. 33% off. 
mean, if you've got Bitcoin, there's no reason not to pay with it at modup.net. And to make the deal even better, use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. Again, code FTL, modup.net, M-O-D-U-P.net. So back to the story here, the latest on the Silk Road motion to dismiss. You're welcome to share your thoughts on Silk Road, the black market, or whatever happens to be on your mind, the Ross Ulbricht case, etc. It's not simply a demand to dismiss the charges against him, uh, which include the you know, money laundering, trafficking in narcotics, etc. It's also a request for more information. The thing about the, uh, the case is they don't know how the FBI found the Silk Road servers in the first place. Tor, this an- anonymous anonymizing software, claims that they're you know they're able to protect people from their locations being discovered. So how was it? What was the exact method that the FBI used? Obviously, they didn't want to put that information in the indictment because whatever it was could reveal that there was uh, some sort of uh, problem with Tor, uh, maybe a back door that's been uh, put into Tor. I don't know. I don't know how they found it. But that's something that they're going to have to reveal. Eventually. This is a, I mean, you know, th- in this country, you have the right to face your accusers. You right to have a right to the, um, you understand how the evidence was collected. You have a right to these things. All, according to the memo, quote, and this was a hundred plus page memo filed with the court by Ross's attorneys, quote, all of the searches and seizures are predicated upon the government's infiltration of the alleged Silk Road servers. However, that event, location, uh, location of the Silk Road servers, or that is the locating of them, is shrouded in mystery as the means and manner in which that discovery was accomplished has not been disclosed. Now, I don't know if this th- motion to dismiss is going to uh, sort of force the government's hand to reveal this information. The judge could probably cover for them, as I've seen judges do in court, by saying, we'll just address that at trial. You bring it. The, the judge could say something like, you, you bring up a good point here, but the appropriate point for this is or the appropriate time for this will be at trial. Mm. So it keep, could be years just to find out. Just to keep dragging this along. Uh, but going on here, it's shrouded in mystery and hasn't been disclosed how they found the servers. Unquote. If that initial, initial pinpointing and penetration of Ulbricht's alleged ser- servers, whether by the FBI, the NSA, or investigators with the means of defeating Tor's privacy safeguards, is determined to be unconstitutional, the defense argues that it could contaminate virtually all of the prosecution's other evidence. It points to what is, uh, it calls the fruit of a poisonous tree doctrine, stating that an improper search can invalidate all subsequent searches based on evidence found in the initial step. Sure. This is why police need to be careful when they do things. But usually the cops, in a lot of cases, I won't say usually, but in a lot of cases, the cops cut corners. And That's because the far fewer than 1% of cases in um, arrests end up going to court. Trial. So they yes. don't actually have to. Is all they have yep. to do is pile up charges and pile up uh, whatever evidence they can find. Exactly. And they don't have to show that this stuff is legal. Which is why when you get charged with something, whether it's something as simple as a speeding ticket or you know distributing marijuana or whatever it is we're talking about here, whenever you're charged with something that doesn't involve a victim, if you take it to trial, you get to see their evidence. They you file for a discovery, file a request for discovery before you go to trial and the state will send you their evidence against you. And then you can look at the law and compare the evidence to the law and find out, oh, w- w- wait a minute. They didn't follow their own rules. So, you know, case dismissed, basically. Or you have a better chance of winning, certainly if you know that they botched up and they, you know, cut corners. But you never find that out if you take the plea deal. You never get to see the evidence if you just cop the plea right out the gate. You can still take a plea later if you want. You can actually get the discovery, look at their discovery and determine, crap, they've got me, you know, dead to rights here. And then they might even come back with a second plea deal because you didn't take the first one. They might come back with a second better plea deal. And that's an important thing to point out here when talking about pleas is is that, you know, when negotiating, you don't take the first offer. And a a plea is negotiations. Now, these people are probably better negotiators than you are, but, hey, look, you don't take the first offer. You've got months, months. Yeah, in this case, it's been almost a year for uh, for Ulbricht. And so, you know, don't just just fall for any old thing. The the motion notes that the requests... Two judges for warrants and other steps of the Fed's investigations didn't explain or even mention the initial discovery of the Silk Road's computers in Iceland. The memo backs up its argument by referring to several recent Fourth Amendment decisions, most notably the case of Riley versus California, in which the Supreme Court ruled that police can't search an arrested suspect's phone without a warrant due to, due to the massive amount of private data that sort of digital device contains. 
It also points to another case in which Microsoft was ordered to respond to a search warrant for emails belonging to one of its users, even though the emails were stored on a foreign server. Ulbricht's defense refers to that second case as a demonstration that the government ought to seek a warrant even when the information it's seeking is stored abroad, as in the case of the Silk Road's Icelandic servers. Quote, the government has not provided any reason why it could not have pursued and why it was not obligated under its own theory of the scope of the law to pursue the same avenue, a warrant, for obtaining the information on the Silk Road server. Unquote. Aside from its Fourth Amendment arguments, the memo makes an unrelated request that the prosecution stop calling Ulbricht a murderer. In its criminal complaint and pretrial arguments, the prosecution has referred repeatedly to Ulbricht's alleged attempts to pay for the murder of six people, including what the prosecutors describe as a potential informant against him and blackmailer. But despite the fact that Ulbricht still faces a separate murder-for-hire case in Maryland, he hasn't been charged with any such killings in the current Southern District of New York case. The defense argues that the that the defense argues that means the prosecution's murder references are unduly prejudicial. There's some sort of something wrong with that. No, sentence. that sounds right. Oh, the defense argues that means the prosecution's murder references are unduly pre prejudicial and violate Ulbricht's right to a fair trial. The murder charges have weighed heavily on Ulbricht's reputation, draining support for a young defendant who might otherwise have been a cause célèbre for privacy and personal freedoms. After all, the Silk Road creator, who called himself the Dread Pirate Roberts, preached a libertarian philosophy of victimless crime and civil disobedience. With his latest motion, the alleged pirate is taking another well-timed shot at elevating his case beyond one of a cybercriminal drug kingpin, this time to a story of illegal government surveillance. And of course, the entire 102-page memo is linked here. I'll link this on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter so you can browse at your leisure. Our toll-free number is 855-450 free. We'll give you the latest on the guy. You remember the teenager we talked about where the cops wanted to take a picture of his penis because the kid was allegedly making porn? We got the latest in that case coming up on Free Talk Live. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Look, kid. When guys like us walk into a facility in the morning, we can smell a problem. No one needs to hand us a work order. We already know it. Today, for instance, we need a new gearbox, six globe valves, and a dozen ballasts. And when I smell a problem, Granger smells that I smell a problem. They help me keep this place up and running. Now that's the kind of smell I like. The sweet smell of success. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.22 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,292 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $587. 
Antiwar.com reports, despite a 72-hour ceasefire supposedly starting early this morning to give way to negotiations in Cairo on a settlement of the conflict, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continues to rule out ending the Gaza war. Dismissing the negotiations, Netanyahu insisted the military operation would continue until the entire Gaza Strip became calm and that there would be no cessation of fire before that. Even during the Monday humanitarian ceasefire, Israel never really ceased fire and continued to pound refugee camps around Rafah, killing more civilians, including an eight-year-old girl. The death toll continues to mount with at least 1,900 now dead and more than 9,500 wounded. In both cases, the toll is overwhelmingly civilian in nature. The Israeli toll remains unchanged at 67 killed, 64 of them Israeli soldiers. A deal to end the war seems extremely unlikely at this point, with Israel talking up the possibility of unilaterally ending the war at some unspecified future date as a viable alternative to making any concessions to ease the humanitarian crisis in Gaza itself. Still, Israel has agreed to send a delegation to Cairo for negotiations, and that means a deal is at least theoretically possible, assuming this ceasefire doesn't end like the last 72-hour ceasefire, 75 minutes in, with Israeli soldiers attacking a tunnel and then complaining that return fire from Hamas fighters inside the tunnel constituted a violation. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. Ballot Access News reports, on July 21st, the California State Appeals Court in the 3rd District again ruled that the Secretary of State does not have the duty to check the qualifications of presidential candidates before placing them on the ballot. The decision in the case of Dumet v. Bowen mentions the Ninth Circuit opinion in the case Lindsay v. Bowen from earlier this year, which says that the Secretary of State may keep presidential candidates off the ballot if she believes they do not meet the constitutional qualifications, but the Dumet does decision says that while the Secretary of State may have the power to exclude unqualified presidential candidates, it does not follow logically that she must therefore investigate those qualifications. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Malaki has ordered the Iraqi Air Force to provide air support for Kurdish Peshmerga fighters as they attempt to stall the latest ISIS advances in the nation's northwest. Kurdish forces have been scrambling to reinforce their position in Nineveh after a major ISIS offensive over the weekend ousted them from some key areas near the Syrian border. The Iraqi military has at times come close to open warfare with the Kurdish Peshmerga over the territorial disputes and both sides are likely to offer aid only to a limited extent to one another. Still, that could be changing as ISIS continues to gain territory against both, amid the growing recognition that the Peshmerga is not invincible when defending their territory from ISIS. However, ISIS now seems to have turned its attention toward important hydroelectric dams, seizing the Mosul Dam over the weekend and attacking the Haditha Dam. Both lie in their new territory, but actual control over them would give them enormous new power over their conquered lands and leverage against the Iraqi government in the ongoing war. Control over the dams would not only give ISIS broad control over Iraq's electricity generation, but over the water flow along the major rivers, allowing them to flood out invading troops or simply prevent the irrigation of Shiite farms. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
After vetting the 37-year-old for factors such as looks, screen presence, and film credits, Hollywood insiders unanimously agreed this week that area man Dennis Kierning lacks the sheer star power necessary to carry a major motion picture. Industry experts spoke to reporters today about the Charlottesville, Virginia resident, who they say just doesn't have what it takes to crack into the A-list. Love him or hate him, I think we can all agree that Dennis Kerning is not a bankable star. He's got to have sex appeal, talent, charisma, and most importantly, that X factor. I should want to sleep with Dennis. I should want to be Dennis. Do I want to be Dennis? No. Experts agreed the Virginia native and father of one does not have the widespread appeal required to secure a distribution deal with wide release, while also saying they had no reason to believe Kierning would ever be capable of delivering the type of powerhouse performance that generates buzz at Sundance, Cannes, or Comic-Con. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site completely free. You get to create the content. That which is on the front page that you see was created by listeners like you. You go to freetalklive.com. You can uh, connect your Free Talk Live account, which is free. To your Reddit account, which is also free if you don't you don't yet have one, and then you can use the features right there on the front page to submit content and to also vote uh, upon the content that has been submitted by others. So go to freetalklive.com and get interactive. Uh, Ian and Mark here with you tonight, taking your calls about whatever's on your mind. You may dial in toll free eight fifty five four fifty free. That's brought to you by Pro XPN. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We have an update on the story about the young man. I think he's seventeen, who was uh, he was he was in trouble and is in trouble for taking some pictures, nude photos. Or sexting, as it is called these days. So that's of just himself, right? Actually, I think his girlfriend shared some of herself as well. But that's, he didn't take those pictures. Correct. Uh, so he shared some to her, and she shared some to him. For some reason, he's the only one who's been charged yeah, of course. on this one. Well, not necessarily, of course. Not necessarily, in some cases, but... Uh, the girls are charged. What's that? In some cases, the girls are charged. Yes, but in seen. few cases, are just the girls char- charged. Good point. So, the freethoughtproject.com has an update on the case. 17-year-old Trey Sims of Northern Virginia was recently sentenced to a year of probation after he was accused of creating and distributing child pornography for sexting his girlfriend. Naked photos were allegedly shared and texted back and forth between him and his former girlfriend. When the photos were discovered by the girl's mother, she reported the situation to police, who then treated the case as if it were a sex crime. Prior to the ruling, police wanted to bring Sims to a hospital and have him injected with a chemical to cause an erection so they could photograph him in an aroused state. They wanted to forcefully create a sexed message in order to catch a teen for sexting. Uh, As the Free Thought Project editorial asks here, who are the real sickos in this scenario? The terms of Sims' probation state he will not be allowed to text. No texting. That's right. For a teenager to not have to text? Well, he's going to be VOP real fast on that one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's it seems like uh, it might be a violation of uh, civil rights in some way. Not allowed to use social media. Not they do allowed, that to a lot of sex offenders. Not allowed to use the internet at all for an entire year. Can you just imagine for a moment that? I mean, no. I can't do my job. Right. We've got listeners out there who don't have internet. They're probably listening via satellite or radio station or something like that. But, you know, for those of us who have been online, it's become an integral part in our lives. And I realize that there are some people who think that's one of the reasons why it's a bad thing. But, you know, that's another discussion to have. And we're happy to have that discussion if you'd like to call in. Uh, The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, presuming you have a phone with which to uh, (laughs) to call us. 
You obviously have a satellite. That listening level device. of technology is acceptable. Radio. However, a higher level of technology is not acceptable. Well, right. Obviously, they're listening to a radio device, likely. Uh, acceptable. Yeah. Yes, that one was around when I was born, right. as was the telephone. So it's okay. So uh, he can't use the internet for a year. He's also being forced to complete 100 hours of community service and is not allowed to contact his former girlfriend. So is this? He's sentenced then. He took it. It sounds like he took a deal to me. Uh, if he fails to meet these terms, his name will be put into the sex offender registry. Wow. Sims and his family are happy to be out of court, but they are extremely disappointed with the verdict. Not only were these pictures now verdict. I don't know if that's the right. They couldn't have gone to trial this quickly, could they? I feel like, well, maybe maybe the first story we heard about this, Mark, was like a couple years after the incident actually happened. It I'm could not really be, clear but... on that. I'm not clear on the time frame here. Uh, so back to the story here. They're disappointed with the verdict. Not only were these pictures exchanged voluntarily, but there's no proof the pictures were actually sent by Sims or that the photos were taken by him. The only proof they have is the pictures came from his phone. Sims told reporters, quote, I feel good about the situation, but then again, I feel bad because we didn't get what we wanted. It's been hard these past couple of months. Hard on my family, hard on me. I'm going to see if we can dig up some these more. These past couple of months. Yeah, it couldn't possibly, couldn't possibly be a plea deal or anything besides a plea deal, right? Yeah, I mean, a verdict sounds very much like it came from a jury. Right, or a judge or whatever, but yeah. So share your thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. Now, unlike most of the Free Thought Project stories, this one actually doesn't have a link to a news, another major news source. It does have an embedded video from looks like an NBC television station. So I would like to find out more if this was, I mean, it's got to be a plea deal. I mean, just all of the evidence makes it sound like it was a plea deal, in which case, the, I think the young man in this case, you know, he, he only has himself to blame. I mean, if he's disappointed with this outcome, he shouldn't have agreed to the deal. You know, if you, if you thought you had a case, you should have gone to trial. And I think that, uh, you know, I think getting this in front of a jury would be fascinating. During the Friday trial, the prosecution reported, trial? Wow. reportedly displayed the sects Mr. Sim allegedly exchanged with his ex-girlfriend, whose mother first reported Mr. Sims to police. Mr. Sims' defense saved him from um, a guilty child pornography verdict by arguing mm -hmm. that there's no proof it was actually the teen in the photos. As uh, for investigators' twisted attempts to photograph Mr. Sims' penis, the requests were reportedly blocked by the judge. They're mm -hmm. using a statute that was designed to protect children from being exploited in a sexual manner to take pictures of these young men in a sexually explicit manner. Right. Uh, that's what seems Sims's Guardian says. The Manassas City Police reportedly addressed their arguably perverted request on Friday, um, stating that they explore all legal avenues and evidence uh, collection to prepare for the trial. So do we know if it was a jury trial? Is that indicated at all? I, I don't know, but it it certainly sounds like it. Hmm. Um I don't know. Yeah. I'm really interested in finding out more about the case. If you happen to be uh, associated with you know, Northern Virginia and maybe you know of a better uh, source for some information, feel free to uh, to reach us here, 855-450-FREE. Looks like there's a few different uh, stories out there. Where were you getting that information from there? Uh, Betabeat.com. Here's a story from uh, The Blaze. Looks like it was a judge who placed him on the probation and he would consider dismissing the two child pornography counts against the teen if he stays free of trouble for a year. The judge said he didn't want to see Sim start out his adult life with a felony conviction. Agreed. Adding there was no declaration of guilt or innocence. Uh, so fascinating This could stuff. be something akin to drug court um, where... They get essentially the punishment without getting the adjudication. Hmm. So anyway, your uh, thoughts are certainly welcome here. I don't think this young man committed a crime. And the fact that he had to spend even one moment fretting about, worrying about this case, um, being stressed out about it is outrageous. The fact that he's on probation now and can't use the internet for a year because he took pictures of his own penis. Are you, are you serious? I would have I would send this kid to live with an aunt in another state would mm -hmm. be my best bet at this point because probation can be transferred if you work the system properly. Right. And I would try to get him as far away from this uh, district as possible because generally they don't care as much in other districts. I don't know what state is most likely or least likely to violate probation, but I would try to get him over that way. Or if you can get him out of the country, I would do that. The whole story is just so outrageous, but it's also not unusual. There are, you know, once at least once a week, we'll, I'll see a story about this kind of thing, about some kind of teenager. It seems like once a week, 
maybe it's a little less frequent than that, but it's it's multiple times a year that we come across these stories about teenagers who, you know, they're madly in love with their, you know, teenage puppy love or whatever, and they want to take their clothes off for one another. If they're not in the same room, they're going to do it in separate buildings, and then they're going to prove that they took those clothes off by sending pictures to one another over the internet. It's not an uncommon thing. It's That's a why bad a choice, in my it. opinion, but I don't think it should be a crime. Um, well, right. It, if it's a bad it, choice, then let the individuals face whatever the fallout is from making those choices without involving the police. But consider this for a second. Um, you're, <laughs> the child porn laws really put the authorities in a strange position. Imagine for a second, because today you can run cameras and do a whole photo shoot with one person. You could do it in front of, I mean, you could literally do this, they, they do this point of view porn. You mm-hmm. could do conceivably if you said it was okay if we finally said okay that's it we're gonna sick and tired of uh, charging uh, underage kids with uh, child porn for taking pictures of themselves well what if the whole industry springs up around them doing it to themselves it's a very strange thing here the nbc news story says that uh, there has been no declaration of guilt or innocence i mentioned it earlier but yeah it looks like apparently there's no ruling no official determination here in this case very strange free talk live Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Onion Week in Review. A month after the death of leader Kim Jong-il, North Korea's 24.5 million citizens have returned to their regular daily routines this week, holding a festive synchronized disco jump rope gala in Pyongyang's main public square. Life in the hermetic communist nation is reportedly beginning to normalize following the protracted mourning period, with citizens once again donning their brightly colored uniforms and performing intricate gymnastics routines in perfect unison. It is an inspiring sight to see so many loyal citizens find the strength to unfurl their long silken streamers and do dozens of tandem backflips set to dance music. Observers reported that new North Korean leader Kim Jong-un nodded once in approval of the disco jump rope gala, signaling an official transfer of power. A recent study from the Centers for Disease Control finds that over 100 million children are being exposed to harmful levels of stupidity in their own homes. Hear the debate about secondhand ignorance on the next In the Know. This is the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want by dialing in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. There's been a new leak, apparently. There's uh, another Edward Snowden out there. News about that coming from Glenn Greenwald's website at firstlook.org. Uh, plus, lots of other stuff to discuss here. Your call certainly welcome. We've also got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username is lrn.fm. Mark, where is one of the best places, I, this, I think arguably the, the most affordable and fastest, in my opinion, uh, to get Bitcoin? Well, you can get Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, or Darkcoin at expresscoin.com. I was recommending it all weekend to people at uh, the county fair. Indeed, it is a great place to do it. It's inexpensive, completely legal, fast. It's easy to use. They pride themselves on their customer service. I've done a lot of business with Expresscoin, and I will continue to do it because I do get great customer service from expresscoin.com. You can get uh, your cryptocurrencies with a money order check or wire transfer, or you can make a deposit in a local credit union. All they have to have is shared branching, and you'll be able to get your Express Coins within a business day after you make your deposit. Excuse me, you'll be able to get your cryptocurrencies from ExpressCoin.com in a, in a, within a business day. So just start off at ExpressCoin.com. You can do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. Yes, they're in Canada. And you want a little deal, use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 of cryptocurrencies with no fee. So if you order under $40 worth, you use coupon code FTL, you'll be able to get uh, you'll be able to have pay no fee at all and that's a really great deal. Why? Because expresscoin.com wants you to get some cryptocurrencies. They want you to have the experience. They want you to do it one time. And if they can do that without uh, pay, charging if if you'll do it because they don't charge you a fee, they're happy to do it. expresscoin.com so we were talking about the case out of Manassas in Virginia, where a young man, age 17, was in trouble for taking pictures of himself, and his teenage uh, girlfriend was also in trouble. I guess well, not as not in trouble actually. She, for whatever reason, wasn't charged. She took pictures of herself as well. So he was charged and uh, could have ended up on a sex offender registry, but the judge in the case decided to defer that to put that off as an option for the future. If the young man uh, misbehaves in the next year, he's and been by sentenced. misbehave you mean send a text, yeah, go online. He's not allowed Correct. online for a year. Yep. I I mean I'm just I'm I'm stunned by that. Really, what's how is that going to make the world a better place? It's crazy. It'll just make his life frustrating and difficult because he's a teenager and you know he likely interacts with other teenagers. Through online media. He can't send a text to anybody now. He can't uh, get on the internet. I suppose he can make a phone call, but not with a smartphone. I don't imagine it would be a really bad idea to give this guy a smartphone at this point. I. So when I was 17, I made a lot of bad decisions. Yeah, oh, and yeah. I can't you imagine. You in prison over it. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I, I can't imagine me making the right decisions around this because, you know, three or four months in, you're feeling like nothing's happening here. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be any big deal to send a text. What's the big deal? You don't know that they're just compiling this evidence against you. You don't know that the, the you know, what you're doing can be used against you. You're just like, eh, whatever, everything's fine. No one will care. And I would. Boom, VOP, you're back in you know, jail. B- not VOP, sex, a sex charge for the rest of your life. VOP stands for violation of probation. But yeah, they would, they would violate your probation and then they would bring the sex right. uh, criminal so, charges. 
I mean, and living with a sex, being on the sex offender registry is bad, bad news. The best thing for this kid is to go to like some kind of, uh, you know, go to the uh, survival training school of uh, ca- California and just for a year, for a year, <laughs> get, 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 get out there and just get away from it all for a year. So we'll talk more about the survival school here in a little bit, but I've got actually a press release because I was looking around, you know, let me get some detail on this case. I want to find out more about it. You know, this this unusual sentence where the news media is describing this case as though he were not found guilty. He was not found not guilty. He was also not found guilty. It was like a deferral of some sort. So I actually found the, because, uh, again, he's 17. Maybe this is some weird juvenile system thing. I can't say I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with the court system in Virginia at all, but, and certainly not familiar with the juvenile system there. But the Manassas police have uh, released a press release regarding this case. They sent it out a few days ago. Uh, and at first they uh, talk about how uh, sexting is becoming more popular and that... Uh, the, Thanks for the tip, when guys. The parents, when parents uh, can't stop the activity, that it's responsibility of law enforcement to investigate the alleged violation of the law and uh, it, the Commonwealth attorney to determine whether it is appropriate to prosecute Sexting activities do not always involve a willing boyfriend-girlfriend exchanging pictures of him or herself. Sometimes relationships end and photos of this nature are disseminated out of revenge or a threat to disseminate the existing well, photos. Let's made... charge that then. That's not what happened in this case. <laughs> I mean, if somebody's distributing pictures uh, that were given to them you know, of naked people, then that's in a different... We're talking about an entirely different situation. I still don't think there's a crime there, but... Uh, no, I guess it's a gift at that point. Yeah. And then you can sort of do what uh, what you want with a gift. I don't recommend it. But, you know, they're not saying that happened in this case, but yet they bring that up anyway for some reason. In Virginia, well, they this say... This is scare. It's FUD. It's yeah. fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That's what they do. The government sells fear. So here's the real bulk of uh, the, the most important part of their press release. In Virginia, the existing laws to address the situation are limited and clear. Whether a juvenile takes sexually explicit photos of himself or herself or of another juvenile, existing law defines that as possession of child pornography. If it is shared with another, existing law defines that as distribution of child pornography. No criminal offense committed by a juvenile is a felony or misdemeanor, however. It is a, quote, delinquent act, unquote, subject to the jurisdiction and unique dispositional alternatives of the juvenile court system. Now, unique dispositional alternatives... Apparently means no due process. Means, well, what that means is that the judge doesn't have to necessarily take a position on this. That's why this guy wasn't found guilty, nor was he found not guilty in this case, because the judge can... He has alternatives in his sentencing, uh, you know, uh, repertoire, shall we say. Uh, so going on here, it is not now and never has been the policy of the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office to seek a permanent conviction on a juvenile for possession or production of child pornography in cases of peer-to-peer sexting. Further, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office has never requested that such juveniles be placed on the sex offender registry. The most common recommendation by their office to the juvenile court is that these cases be deferred for dismissal at a future time with probation conditions, including forfeiture and destruction of the electronic devices because images cannot truly be permanently deleted. And there are also instances where counseling or limitations on the use of electronic devices are appropriate. So it sounds to me like... The prosecutor got exactly what they were asking for in this case. It, it, well, I, I wouldn't uh, argue with that, but I, I would say that this is this is them sort of tiptoeing around an issue. This kid may not be getting a sex offender charge for sending naked pictures of himself. No, but there's one hanging over his head. But he could get sex offender charges for getting on the internet in the next 365 days. That's right. For sending a text in the next 365 days. Yes. Th- so at that point... They will be able to say, well, no juvenile in the Commonwealth of Virginia has ever gotten a a sex charge for sending naked pictures of themselves. Mm. However, we will dole that crap out if they're on probation and they do not follow every single stupid rule we've got. Yep, that's a good point. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Oh, wait, there's an extra little detail that's very interesting. Share that with you here in a moment. You can take control, especially if you're somebody who thinks this guy should be punished and punished hard. I want to hear from you. It's Free Talk Live. 
Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Maybe you think the Manassas police should go after, and any police should go after, teenagers for taking naked pictures, in this case, of themselves. And and, and an individual is what I mean. Not in a sexual position with his girlfriend, 17-year-old in the Manassas, Virginia area, is now looking at a year of probation where he cannot get on the internet. He cannot even send a text message 
He can't talk to his ex-girlfriend. If he does, he gets a sex charge. Or maybe his current, current girlfriend. I don't know if, you know, if they broke up voluntarily. I think his mother, or her mother, rather, found out about the pictures somehow. And she's the one who brought all this upon him. And so if you think that he should be facing time in jail or a sex offender charge, I really want to hear from you. Now, the police department says they've never asked for a sex offender charge to be brought against a juvenile. They said that's not what they normally that's not what they normally request. Normally, they want uh, the, here's the quote from their actual press release about this case. They've never requested juveniles be placed on the sex offender registry for sexting. Uh, the most common recommendation is that the cases be deferred for dismissal at a future time with probation conditions, including forfeiture and destruction of the electronic devices, as well as limitations on the use of devices in the future and counseling. Yep. This is essentially a mandatory breakup. Um, yes. He's not allowed to talk to this gal and apparently not allowed to have another girlfriend because, mm -hmm. you know, these days the kids text. They sure do. Uh, however, those juveniles, here's the con continuing with the statement here from the police. This is the part I didn't get to in the last segment, which is important to what actually happened. Because, again, the judge did not find him guilty or not guilty. He just imposed probation, which I couldn't understand when I was reading the news article about this. It just didn't make sense. I mean, I'm familiar with the adult criminal justice, so-called justice system. <laughs> and I'm familiar that you don't get probation unless you get found guilty. Probation's part of a sentence. Right. So how does it, you know, how is the juvenile system different? Well, according to the police's Here's how. press release, however, those juveniles, through the attorneys representing them, must agree to such dispositions in order to avoid a trial in which our adversarial legal system determines the outcome. This was not an actual trial. Whatever it was that happened in front of that judge with whatever evidence that was supposedly shown, because you read some sort of article saying that some of the texts were shown in court, right? Some of the, the sexts were displayed. I thought so, yeah. Yeah, you, I remember you saying something about that earlier. So it sounds like there was maybe an offer of proof or some sort of you know evidence sure. shown, but that it wasn't an actual full-on trial. This is a plea deal. The judge basically came up with this saying, all right, kid, you know, I'm the judge in the juvenile system and I get more leeway because of my dispositional abilities or whatever how it was phrased in the police's press release here. Certainly wasn't the way phrased the way we'll phrase it. Uh, and uh, so dispositional alter unique dispositional alternatives were the <laughs> words the police used. I have my unique dispositional alternatives and that includes that I can put you on probation if you agree. You you must agree to this. Son. Oh, yeah, this is a you, and you're not under any kind of duress right now, are you? So we'll put you on probation for one year. Uh, you can't text your ex-girlfriend. You can't contact her at all. In fact, you can't text anyone. You cannot use the Internet for an entire year. And if you do any of these things, you may be subject to being considered a sex offender. We're not going to put you on the sex offender registry right now, okay? Cause not we, today. You know, we don't want to ruin your life right at this moment. We just want to imprison you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we will put you on the sex offender registry if you violate my orders or this deal and so then the young man had to agree through his attorneys to that deal so it's a it's a glorified plea deal it's like a juvenile plea deal yep, basically i think it's what it is it's what that was and so again the young man was disappointed his comments to the media after this were of disappointment in how frustrating it was that they didn't get what they wanted. You took the deal. Well, I, <laughs> it's the deal proffered by the judge on right. the day of. I mean, this is one of the things about a plea deal is when you're dealing with a prosecutor is you can like, you know what, I'm going to think about that. Mm -hmm. But when the this judge is laying either. it out there, look, you need to take what I'm giving right now or we're or going to send you up the river. Well, no, no, it would be. Or you know what they do to pretty boys like you in yeah. a county jail? Not quite. It's you either take this deal now or we go to trial. But it's not clear whether that trial would have happened on the same day or whether the trial would be scheduled for the future. That's I'm sure it clear. would be uh, scheduled for the future. Well, I'm not sure, but you think you think so. You could be right. Uh, the sexting case, according to the police, uh, this again, this page two of their press release here, uh, that has recently garnered so much attention, the investigating detective with the police, off, uh, police department was instructed by a member of the attorney's office to obtain a search warrant in order to photograph for evidentiary purposes the genitalia of the defendant. 
Upon consultation with the identification expert, the prosecutor subsequently authorized a second search warrant seeking a photograph of the erect penis of the defendant, which, of course, is how this story came on our radar in the first place. The whole thing, right. The, the cops wanted to take pictures of people's uh, erect penises. And while that procedure was being pursued, it was determined during the internal review process that such a search warrant would not be executed and it was allowed to expire according to law. Many have expressed concern at what they believe to be an extreme measure in this type of case. However, when a criminal defendant, adult or juvenile, decides to exercise his or her right to a trial, it is necessary for the prosecution to explore all legal avenues of evidence collection in order to prepare for a trial. This is their excuse paragraph sure, of explaining course is, yeah. why they did this. While those legal avenues may be explored, they are not always pursued and are sometimes, as in this case, abandoned. This is particularly appropriate after a balancing of the interests involved and when further evaluation confirms the sufficiency of the other evidence supporting the guilt of the accused. So they're just they're saying here, which is ridiculous, the reason they uh, they're saying the reason they uh, didn't go. We were through. just thinking about taking a picture right. of his penis. Right. We just wanted to exhaust all our alternatives. We wanted to make sure we had that one in our quiver so we could use it if necessary. But it turned out the rest of the evidence was so good we didn't really need to get pictures of his junk. So we just went ahead and let that warrant expire as we we're allowed to do so by law. No, no, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that the story blew up on you know alternative media, and, yeah. you know to some extent on mainstream media, and that they there look was like a bunch of crazy perverts right that you know your cops look like hypocrites no that didn't have anything to do with it it was just we made the executive decision that we really didn't need to collect the information because we had our case you know it was in the bag no problem i w- i Good hope we get a um the opportunity to get a follow-up on this because i've got to say i think i don't think this kid's gonna make it oh yeah give him a month i mean that's he makes it two weeks it, he's, he's not allowed to text <laughs> he's not allowed to use the internet it's over i'm sorry <laughs> It's, he's not gonna. Be, he's not gonna. He's not gonna stick with it. He thinks this is being grounded or something. I mean, he can't even turn his PlayStation on without uh, you know, disconnecting the Wi-Fi. I mean, he's gonna be getting online. He can't play video games either unless you know you disconnect the Wi-Fi on your PlayStation or your Xbox. Yeah, he's. I, I think he's through. Share your thoughts. The toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty-free. Oh, and here's the final paragraph in there. Press release. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office and the Manassas City Police Department encourage parents to be proactive in discussing the potential consequences of sexting with their children and to be vigilant in monitoring the legal and responsible use of their children's electronic devices. How the hell do you do that as a parent? I mean, how could you possibly be vigilant about what your uh, teenagers are doing on their cell phones? Which and are why didn't this girl who did the same thing get charged like this guy? That's a darn good question. He is a she little. She was fifteen. I he's a bit over at the time. She was fifteen. She's no longer. Right. Um, but he was seventeen. Mm-hmm. Really? Is there that big of a difference? I mean, there's some difference, but is there that big of a difference? No. They put them in high school together. Yep. If you don't want the ki- <laughs> if you don't want these kids doing it, don't put them in high school together. So, uh, yeah, parents, be proactive in discussing the potential consequences of sexting, which include apparently being imprisoned and possibly getting on the sex offender registry. Because had it, you know, if it weren't for these stupid rules. Kids, the cops are dangerous. Right. They want to take pictures of your erect penis. They want to throw you in jail. I mean, you know, that's what you should be discussing with your kids. Yeah. Um, Look. The consequence of sexting without the police around is next to zero. Maybe a little bit of embarrassment when, you know, somebody shares your picture with people they weren't supposed to share it with and it spreads That's virally. That can happen. Spreads virally around uh, the school. And I don't recommend it at all. Teenagers start making fun of your junk or whatever. I mean, that's... Kids are going to pick on people. What's new there? 855-450-FREE. That's uh, 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Your thoughts on sexting are welcome or anything. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. 
Firm.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Moms of America, stand up and stop taking abuse from your kids. I pledge never to let my kid disrespect me ever again. I pledge to stop letting my daughter walk all over me. I pledge to stop living in fear of my son's anger. I pledge never to feel like a bad parent ever again. Because I'm not. I pledge to stop letting my child's behavior control my home. I pledge to be a mom with kids who listen. A total transformation mom. I'm Janet Lehman, co-creator of the Total Transformation Program. We created the Total Transformation to help parents with difficult child behavior. Now I'm giving it away free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Call now. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-393-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Have you ever wanted to help a hard-working person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here. 855-450-FREE. That number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features waiting there for you. All totally free. If you want to get behind the show, then shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. You can shop over at Amazon or some other places as well. And Free Talk Live will get a cut of your purchase. And it's a great way to get the stuff you need online. Get the same great Amazon prices, the same huge selection that you're used to, the reviews, everything. You're just entering Amazon through our affiliate link. And so Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. And thanks for doing that. Taking the extra moment to go to shop.freetalklive.com. Let's go to David. He's in Michigan City, Indiana. We've been talking about the young man who was uh, charged with creating child pornography and distributing child pornography for taking pictures of his own penis uh, to send them to his teenage girlfriend at the time. He's now been sentenced to a year's probation. He's not allowed to use an uh, internet device, not allowed, even allowed to text. And David, you're on uh, calling, listening to WIMS in Michigan City. Go ahead. 
Uh, yes, I was just uh, hearing all your, uh, your uh, explanation on everything. And the thoughts that I came up with was, one, uh, that they are trying to take pornography of a, an underage child and use that as criminal against him. Um, and also the other thought is, is that, uh, yes, he should not be uh, doing the sexting anyway, but uh, that uh, their way of prosecuting him um, and wanting to take pictures was uh, reminiscent of a movie uh, back a long time ago called Porky, where the uh, uh, one teacher was wanting to uh, examine each of the boys to find out which penis that she had seen. Was this <laughs> Nurse, uh, Nurse Ratchet or something? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't that name. It was something else. I don't okay. remember. Brubacker or something. Okay. Okay. Is that right? I don't know. I, I don't Sounds know. believable. It's been a while. Um, anyway, it was a comedy. and Yeah, uh, yeah. A classic 80s just, comedy. So now you uh, you think that he shouldn't have been sexting in the first place. But but is it a crime, right? Like, should it be a crime to take a picture of yourself as a teenager and send it to somebody over the Internet? It's a great question. Um, is are are you committing child pornography if you are a child taking a picture of yours? <laughs> I don't. Is it even I pornography? I make, is I mean, um, I don't t- want to make that choice. <laughs> Well, that's what well, I'm asking. I mean, it's, uh, it shouldn't be a tough answer. To me, it's not a tough answer because there's no victim here. The idea behind the child pornography statutes, as I understood them, right. was to protect children from being victimized by being adults and forced to do things against their will. Yeah, and that the uh, reasoning behind it, that sounds like the right thing. But it's also uh, kind of so, the laws, Ian, though, the laws are there to some extent to shape society's sexual interests. Mm. And that's where this comes that in. Out? Well, uh, I don't know how it's working yeah. out. I couldn't tell you. Maybe maybe it's working out reasonably well. But the, you know, so in this circumstance, because if you say, okay, it's legal for young people to take pictures of themselves in sex acts with other young people as long as everybody consents, then you have created a whole new industry where... Uh, you know, maybe adults can then tell young people, look, here, you take these remote control cameras, <laughs> you go in there, you make stuff, yeah. we'll pay you for it, and then we'll put it online. Everybody's consenting mm-hmm. here, right? You're consenting, I'm consenting, everybody's consenting. Uh, Pretty soon, you've got this. Well, the law would say that they can't consent, right? Like the the law's viewpoint on people under then 18 they can't is that consent, they can't consent. Then he couldn't consent to taking the picture in the first place. So therefore, the it's fact ridiculous. that he consented is, is against the law. It's ridiculous to say that a teenager cannot consent. Consent, I think. Your thoughts, David? Right. Yeah, the, the age of accountability is a, a big thing, and it's so arbitrary. And, yeah, that, they should have probably some more legal course. But, like, you can't uh, – signing somebody else's permission or whatever, yeah, you shouldn't – as a parent, you shouldn't be able to sign off that uh, you're allowing – or consenting for the child to do these other things, too. David, thanks uh, for your call, man. I appreciate your thoughts tonight. Let's okay. get Jeff in here uh, in Ohio. Jeff, you're on Free Talk Live. Your thoughts. Hi, guys. Ooh, we've got you in a bad cell. I'm going to put you on hold, Jeff. We're going to try you back here in a moment. Uh, Jim, maybe you'll clear it up. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live in Virginia. Let's try you. Go ahead. Guys, this case is ridiculous. This is Larry Flint meets Adolf Hitler meets the Keystone Cops. <laughs> the dumbest prosecutor in the world. But this happens a lot, and it's got to be clarified by the courts. If you give a prosecutor power, they will go nuts. Like you said, the law was never meant to – no one's exploited here. Yeah. yeah. It, it's crazy, but – if I could translate that letter that from the prosecutor, just, that to, you clear, were just reading, to clarify, Jim, do you happen to be in the Manassas area? No, no, okay. I'm I'm in uh, Lynchburg down there, gotcha. yeah, a couple hours from there. Go ahead. No, but the Virginia prosecutors are just insane, and the rules in Virginia are really tilted uh, away from the defense. But if I could just translate that letter that guy wrote, yep. it's holy crap! I just got national pub, uh, publicity. And I'm ordering a kid to produce child porn in order to make him and to give it to me in order to make in order to prosecute him for making child porn. Well, but just just to be clear, they the uh, they ultimately did not the power of, do that. The, right? No, but that's only because the the, the publicity came out. Correct. They got they got the power of the state 
They got a judge to sign a piece of paper which says a can point a gun at you and say, produce child porn. (laughs) <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on. It's not producing child porn when they do it. Just like there's, yeah, there's right. so many laws out there where there's exemptions written in for the police. Like in New Hampshire, wiretapping, uh, you know, I can't record a, a call to somebody that, you know, where they don't know they're being recorded in New Hampshire. It's terrible law here in New Hampshire. But there's specific exemptions in there when law enforcement does it. It's not considered wiretapping. I mean, almost a lot. A lot of criminal statutes have that in there, where there's a well. This is this is the case for everyone except for law enforcement. So it's not child pornography when they do it. It's collecting evidence. Yeah, but there's. No, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not familiar with that the specifics of that. I am familiar with that Virginia statute, but not whether there's. A, I don't believe there's an exemption for law enforcement. They were just insane, and judges don't do their job. They rubber stamp everything a prosecutor said, and this just blew up in their face. And the, you're right, the crime is bogus. But what's not bogus is an adult ordering, in the name of the state, in my name, an adult ordering a kid to produce child porn and give mm-hmm. it to an adult. What you were saying in your scenario with the remote control camera? Oh no, they were going to they were going to take the pictures of the of his penis. I mean, they they were going to inject him with some sort of a, a chemical to create an erection, and then they would be phot- uh, photographing his erection. They're going to leave it up to the kid to uh, take pictures of his own penis. The cops themselves would be the ones snapping the pictures. They would be producing child porn. I mean, I don't know if I'm in the Commonwealth of Virginia or a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call. I appreciate hearing from you tonight, Jim. Uh, Jim. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're going to try Jeff in, uh, Jeff in Ohio one more time. He called back. He's got a better line. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi, guys. Uh, I think hey. castration is the only possible answer because we <laughs> know that you're going to be ser- serial sexters. You know? <laughs> As they, as they grow up, the hormones get worse, and so that's the only answer. Just chop them off, like what, before they become a teenager? Or, I mean, what are you proposing? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but sometime before they get their fingers on the buttons. Just more. At some point, they just need to be castrated. That'll put a put a stop to this. I don't know. Would it actually though? Like, if you castrated a uh, a teenager. And that's just cutting off his testicles, right? So, well, it depends on what you know. I mean, castration could be a variety of things. Okay. All right, what are you proposing? Okay. Then let's get specific. <laughs> okay. How about pre-crime? Uh, when they're nine, just because they might think about it. Get rid of the whole thing. Anything else you want to share tonight, Jeff? That's all, buddy. Good call. Thanks for making it tonight. I think his tongue was in uh, in his cheek. I would imagine. I would sincerely hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Though it wouldn't surprise me if there was someone out there who thought that that should happen for real. They just those those people just don't call in. No, they well they have the power of the state on their side. They don't have to call in. (laughs) I mean, you really have to get them all whipped up uh, to to actually make a call. You know, I'm surprised the uh, the police didn't put in for a warrant to just go ahead and manually uh, give the young man an erection rather than use a chemical. I mean, why not go all the way at this point? <laughs> Thank God they didn't. Yeah. All right, so there you go. He's got a plea deal and uh, years probation. And take, I guess, place your bets. I mean, how long before this story comes back across our radar for a violation of probation in this case? He can't text. That- he can't get online, or it's a violation. I think it'll be too small to show up. You're right. You might be right about that. Oh, we'll find out over time here. Of course, uh, you can always bring things to our attention by calling in toll-free at 855-450-FREE and submitting to our website various news stories at freetalklive.com. There's more on the way here. You can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. 
GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,289, silver opened at $20.13, and Bitcoin is trading around $581. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, after Israeli forces bombed a United Nations school in Gaza, the United States called the attack disgraceful and encouraged Israel to work harder to prevent civilian casualties. The bombing happened Wednesday last week, leading U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Paskey to call for an investigation into the attacks. On Monday, the Israeli government and Hamas accepted a 72-hour ceasefire brokered by the Egyptian government. The current conflict has been raging for nearly a month. On Tuesday afternoon, the Houston City Council will once again hear arguments from supporters and opponents of ride-sharing services such as Uber and Lyft. The companies allow customers to request rides via smartphone apps and are currently not subject to the same fees as traditional taxis. In recent weeks, the issue has been tabled numerous times with heated debate coming from both sides. Taxi cab drivers and supporters have flooded City Hall in yellow shirts asking City Council to impose similar fees and regulations on the ride-sharing companies. If the measure is not tabled again, a vote will take place Wednesday morning. Saturday, August 9th, the Brave New Books join the Alliance of Austin Agorists as they host Catherine Bleich, Justin and Jessica Armand, and Tracy Ward, four Central Texas residents who have had relative success enterprising agorist ventures. Agorism is revolutionary market anarchism, and this bunch does more than talk the anarchist talk, they live it. Join the community from 6 until 10 o'clock this Saturday at Austin's Brave New Books for an open discussion on what it takes to find freedom in an unfree world. The event will also feature an agorist farmer's market. So come early and participate in the counter-economy. It's this Saturday, August 9th, 6 until 10, as the Alliance of Austin Agorists hosts Catherine Bleich, Justin and Jessica Armon, and Tracy Ward at Austin's Brave New Books. Support comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online, bravenewbookstore.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons, 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. 
According to an article released by BenSwan.com, C-SPAN's Washington Journal invited the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, Richard Gage, to be a guest for an entire segment dedicated to the collapse of World Trade Center 7. Gage's group includes over 2,200 architects and engineers that have discovered evidence contrary to the official report by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. The official report concluded that World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. Richard Gage stated live on C-SPAN that 40,000 tons of steel cannot fall due to an office fire. World Trade Center 7 fell at the speed of free fall, straight down, uniformly, and symmetrically. An impossibility without controlled demolition. All 80 columns would have had to have been removed simultaneously for a building to fall like this. No steel frame structures ever fallen from a fire. Gage told C-SPAN that the official story of 9-11 could not be true and is calling for a real investigation. A Guatemalan court has ruled in favor of indigenous Mayan communities in the municipality of Supacapa, declaring that local governments must consult the communities before granting any mining permits. The Mayan Council of Sipacaba held a press conference July 23rd discussing the details of the victory. According to the council, the judgment means the Guatemalan government must respect the indigenous people's right to information and consultation in accordance with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and International Labor Organization Convention 169. Based on the judgment, at least one of the current mining excavations is illegal and must be withdrawn. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's. Non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. For over 12 years, Halverson Enterprises CEO Peter Weathers has taken a hands-on approach in all aspects of the tech firm's growth and day-to-day -day business. But employees say the executive's true talent lies in his unique ability to recognize great ideas and then absolutely ruin them. For as long as I've worked here, Peter has been able to sit down in a meeting, listen to a million different ideas, pick out the one that makes the most sense creatively and financially, and then totally destroy it until there's basically nothing worthwhile about it left. He's remarkable. Employees through Throughout the company say they're most impressed by Weathers' ability to water down promising ideas with meaningless jargon, consistently choose the wrong person to head up every project, and inject virtually every halfway decent thought with his own short-sighted and terrible insights. At our all-hands meeting the other week, our team put forth a very feasible plan to boost productivity, and it was really incredible to see Peter's mind at work, just taking every good aspect of our proposal and dismantling it like a small child. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. All kinds of cool features on the site for you. All totally free. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for accessing their websites. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy. As we continue here, we will take your calls about anything tonight. We've talked about the latest on the Silk Road case with Ross Ulbricht's attorneys filing another motion to dismiss, basically claiming all of the government's evidence was illegally collected. In this particular case against the man alleged to have been the operator of an underground drug market on the internet called Silk Road. You're welcome to comment on that. You can also talk about the plea deal uh, for the young man who is uh, now not found guilty, but also not found not guilty, not found anything. Uh, it's deferred. His sentencing has been deferred until he completes a year's probation, which is a bizarre thing, considering normally in criminal court you don't get probation unless you're sentenced to probation. This isn't a sentence. It's like a deferral with a juvenile thing. Juvenile court system's different. Anyway, the issue of sexting is the one that was at hand there. Teenagers taking pictures of themselves naked, sending those pictures to other teenagers. I guess, you know, adults do it too, uh, but it's only the teenagers no you hear about. No one seems to care when uh, adults do it. Right. It's only the teenagers you hear about because the teenagers are the ones being charged with manufacturing child pornography of themselves uh, in this case. So you're welcome to comment on that as well. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, you can bring up anything you want. Uh, the news coming out of Glenn Greenwald's blog at First Look, The Intercept. 
is that apparently there's a new leaker out there, somebody besides Edward Snowden. And uh, it's all about the, the, the document that's come out, the classified, well, formerly classified documents uh, that have been leaked are all about the U.S.'s database of terrorist suspects. We'll tell you about that here in a moment. Sean, first, though, is with us in Vancouver. Sean, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Go ahead. I won't uh, waste time. I'll just get right to it. I've been listening to the show now for uh, about the last three months, and I listen to every single episode. I appreciate your guys' viewpoint on a lot of things. I've actually learned quite a bit about liberty from you guys, so I appreciate that. I uh, wanted to uh, direct this at Mark, actually. Mark, uh, now, it's come out on a few episodes, some people, and they've been quite aggressive about it, which I don't uh, think is right. But uh, concerning your past and uh, concerning, you know, uh, you went to prison for... Um, second degree I, I don't murder. even know what the charge was. Second degree what, murder. What was it? it was, pardon? Second degree murder was what I uh, pl- took a plea bargain for. Right, right. And so I know it, it's probably a touchy subject, and um, I, was just, I was just curious, and you don't have to answer this uh, if you don't want to, but I'd just like to know if you could, you know, give me, give your listeners just like a small, short synopsis of what exactly transpired from your, from your view sure. of what happened. I just, I just want to know, because I, I like you guys, right? And uh, I like your viewpoints and stuff, and... Uh, I like how you guys beat off each other. I like the other hosts. I'm interested in this. And I just, um, but I like to know things. Yeah. Like it to- looms like a specter on the conversation. I mean, if you know this, you're kind of always sort of wondering. And I think we've got to have this call every few months in mm-hmm. order to uh, to sort of talk about Has it. Has somebody been calling weekly on the Sunday shows? There's I've been heard? a guy that's been sort of uh, calling in pretty regular on the Sunday show and, and uh, trying to... I don't know. He seems to just want to yell murderer. Trying to out you or yeah, something. Yeah, or something to that effect. And I try to deal with him as much compassion as I possibly can, mm-hmm. but it doesn't sound like he cares to come to some conclusion. It doesn't It doesn't sound like he cares about, you know, like coming to, to some um, – uh, I don't know what he wants, mm. right? Like, other than to Just come to on. drag you through the mud. Right, that's, that's like. what it sounds like. So let me um, give a quick synopsis. Um, there are no heroes in this story, and you need to understand that from the get-go. Um, there are only victims, and there are, and you can decide where I fall into it, because uh, I didn't know what was going to happen when I went to a hotel room. I there thought was that, drug deal involved, right? Yeah, I thought that I was going to be sort of indoctrinated, uh, brought into a, uh, a small-time uh, cocaine ring. And um, I was asked to sort of wait in the bathroom. And I heard a scuffle when I came out. And I, my my co-defendant also gave me, you know, he handed me a, a wrench to protect myself or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what I thought, right? I'm 17 years old. This is 1988. Um, and, you know, there you go. So I hear some kind of scuffle. And I go out, and I'm like, uh, you know, hey, guys, what's going on? And there's a fight ensuing between these two guys. So, yeah, I jumped in and uh, struck a man on behalf of my partner in order to, uh, my, my, you know, friend, what I thought to be my friend, in order to sort of break these things up. I had a team, right, and I didn't know what was going on. And in because he got the advantage, my co-defendant at this point because <laughs> I had committed a crime, um, he uh, strangled this guy to death. Mm. I actually pulled on him and said, hey, you're killing him. Um, and that didn't seem to make a difference. I, I've got to say I was cowardly um, and I was scared. You know, I was scared. Mm. I didn't know what was going on. And so the guy died and I actually checked his pulse. I wasn't sure what to do. Um, and, you know, I ended up we, I cleaned up some of the um, fingerprints because I'm like, I don't want to be here for this. You know, like I, I just kind of felt separated from the whole situation. Like I, whoa, whoa, I didn't have anything to do with this. And sure enough, I did have something to do with that. And uh, my partner ran from town. I had the opportunity to, uh, if I would have kept my mouth shut the law- and just uh, gone with a you know, lawyer, I probably would have never gotten any, um, had any problem at all. But I didn't keep my mouth shut. And if I would have, um, you don't think there would have been a problem. I mean, you did admit to having struck this uh, the victim, right? When, when do you mean admit it? Right now. Yeah. 
So I mean, wouldn't that have been wouldn't that have been manslaughter? I mean, generally, what would that I don't be? even know what um, you know at that point if I uh, if they decided that that was aggravated battery that mm-hmm. I intended to you know or whatever, then they could call that a felony. And if it's a felony and somebody dies, you can call it felony one murder. Hmm. And at that point, you're talking about the the death penalty as a possibility. Hmm. Um, you know, whatever. I don't know. I didn't have the motive. In this circumstance, yeah. my partner had uh, my you know this, this this guy Carmen Tungate he had uh, stolen a bunch of money from this guy's hotel. I had no clue what was going on. Mm. I was just you came into the middle of a fight and you picked a side, right? It, yeah, foolishly. Yeah. So that's what happened. Okay, uh, I'll let you guys go. But before I go, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to explain that. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll continue listening to you guys. I just wanted to say too that. Uh, I have also been involved in uh, the kind of darker side of uh, of the drug trade, and I actually went to prison for it mm. as well. Um, I got a nine month sentence for trafficking in in cocaine. And nine months. I just pardon. Nine months. Nine months. Okay. Yeah, it was Canada's uh, not as harsh. Uh, on this as as the U.S. is. And I did a little bit of uh, legal maneuvering on my side to kind of uh, portray myself as someone who, you know, uh, was taken advantage of by the system. Um, there were some police that uh, had lied, and they – I'm actually a Caucasian person. I'm uh, – I guess the ancestry would be like Hispanic Jewish. And they said I was a Vietnamese person, so there was a whole – uh, big thing about that, but ended up, ended up by I ended up getting nine months, and I, I just think that you shouldn't feel. Don't let anybody, you know, talk to you, talk down to you about this because you were in a dark time in your life, and in the drug trade, especially with the war on drugs, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. And I, it doesn't unless, make it okay, though. Yeah. I mean, you're not the same person that you were back then, Mark. I mean, that's this is pl- more than 20 years ago, 25 years well, ago. Well, I, I, I would agree that you shouldn't let people get down, because really, what are the alternatives at this point? Let's say that I'm guilty of the worst possible aspect of this crime. My co-defendant's not even involved. You know, I'm the, the terrible killer in this circumstance. Let's say that I am, and that I'm free right now. And I've got a six-year-old son, and I've got a wife, and mm-hmm. I've got a radio program. What exactly am I supposed to do? Do you just want me to turn off the mic and leave, or should I commit suicide? What's the what's the solution here? Because I can't think of one. Sean, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-453. More about the terrorist watch list here coming up. I did the time they asked me to do. You can take control. Nine years, by the way. Take control of the airwaves here at 855-453. And people can change. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through Shop 
www.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control right here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy all kinds of features. You can create the content. And you can also submit content over to the folks at freedomsphoenix.com. That's where they're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies every day at readers, uh, readers of freedomsphoenix.com. Get that. In fact, you're constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up to the minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com, get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Nathan is on the line in Texas via Skype. Hey, Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, guys. Hey, go ahead. Uh, so there's something I've been thinking about lately, which Mark's story uh, reminded me of, and that's this idea of, yield, of yielding to the pressure or, or social pressure of others or kind of going along, going with the flow, as uh, Ian says sometimes. And Mark's story kind of dramatizes it in the most extreme case, right? Because you're 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 with this. I don't know. I don't know what kind of reputation this gentleman had, but you were with him in this kind of shady hotel room, and then Whoa, things. Shady. Hold on a second. Shady. You said shady. I just <laughs> want to make sure uh, our listeners know that I I did have to dr- dump that just because it was a little bit questionable. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I did have to dump that because it didn't really sound like shady. It sounded like something else. So uh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Okay, well, uh, ho- hopefully my connection's better now. Um, but you're in a situation where you are um, basically you're a partner with this gentleman, or you're with him in some enterprise, and you end up getting blamed for something that he does. And I've heard this kind of thing before, like we're like say if someone's working at a business that's engaged in laundering money, and then the police come in and they don't particularly care that you're just the clerk at the desk. You know, they arrest everybody. So it seems like this is the extreme case, right? Where going along, going going with the flow can really hurt you. Would you agree with that, Mark? Oh yeah, absolutely. In that circumstance, going with the flow hurt me a, a great deal. I, 
Um, what should you have done in that circumstance, Mark? For our listeners just tuning in, when you were 17, you were involved in a drug deal uh, that went went bad, and the person you were with committed murder during that deal. You actually sort of kind of helped with the fight a little bit when you stumbled upon it from the other room where you were supposed to kind of be hiding out. Um, what do you think the best situation was? You know, the the best. You know, hindsight being 2020. What should you have done? The first thing I should have done is uh, not spoken to the police at all. Mm. You don't give evidence on yourself ever, ever. Um, that doesn't mean that you think you can outsmart, because I thought I could outsmart the police. And you can't outsmart the police. I didn't mean it's- after the fact. You're welcome to continue okay. that answer. Okay, sure. But I meant in the moment. You know, hindsight being 2020, looking at the actual hotel room situation, when you came across this fight, uh, you know, you were asked to hide in a bathroom, you heard a scuffle, you came out. I should have physically pulled my uh, friend off of the guy when he was strangling him to death. Instead of saying something and kind of touching him, Mm -hmm. I should have physically grabbed him and pulled him off. But let's not forget that I weighed 127 pounds. How big was he? My uh, friend? The... The associate, yes. Yeah, and not uh, bigger than me, but mm-hmm. not a heck of not not hulking or anything. He was like not that. your friend, uh, as it turned out. Well, no, but I mean, at right. the time, I don't know how to, else to describe him. I mean, now my co defendant, your partner, your yeah, business partner, he's dead now. Um, what <laughs> happened with him? Did he get shot? I believe he was shot um, at a van near a library or yeah. something like that. Apparently, his life didn't turn around after prison. No, the guy had been, he was involved in crime after crime after yeah. crime. So, I mean, that's another thing to sort of look at. Um, He's you know. dead. You're still here. You've got a family. Well, and he committed many crimes. Yeah. I committed one. Well, I actually was thinking more about kind of being in the car on the way or like that morning when you got up for breakfast, like not necessarily when you're right there at the moment and you have to decide what to do, right? Well, I didn't exactly know what was going to—I had no clue what was going to go on in that hotel room, so therefore, I mean— Do you think he was planning a murder or was— Okay. Or it just didn't go—it wasn't wasn't something that went wrong. It was he wanted to murder this guy. Yeah, in hindsight, I think—I have no doubt that Mm -hmm. he intended to murder Well, I guess what I'm asking is, is there there anything— any clue that could have tipped you off that you shouldn't be associating with this person? Like, Oh, yeah, he was bad news. was he like the drug dealer on Breaking Bad who just kind of randomly goes crazy and starts hurt, punching people or like? I know nothing of Breaking Bad, but mm-hmm. um, this guy was bad news from the get-go. And that's probably one of the things that attracted me to him. I was you You're know, a bad boy, right? Yeah, I was definitely involved in some bad stuff. I never intended to get quite as bad as uh, things got, no, mm-hmm. d- no doubt about it. But I had burglarized houses and burglarized oh, wow. cars and you know done some, some rough stuff. And you to some extent— crap. What's that? You little S. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I stole <laughs> stole some stuff. There's no doubt about it. Man. S- stupid stuff, too. Um, but, you know, and that's to some extent I gave myself solace while in, in prison that I'm like, look, you know, if I Karma. got caught for everything I <laughs> yeah. did, maybe I would do this amount of time. Yeah, it's very well true. That's interesting, Mark. I didn't know that about you. I didn't know the extent of uh I told you na- many the times on, on the air that I had uh, done burglaries. Absolutely. Okay. I don't and remember that. Home burglaries and car burglaries. Yep. Well, I don't remember either, but uh, yeah. that's another interesting passage to the story. But yeah, I just think of I'm just thinking of like the person who's you know the, you know the, the the kid working at the desk of the company that's laundering the money, and and mm-hmm. I think he he's in a better position because he can say, oh well, this is clearly illegal activity. I should get out of here. Um, I don't know if that accurately describes the position you were in. It sounds like you wanted to be there, so to speak. So. There you yeah, go. I yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I, people feel trapped for a variety of reasons um in, you know, social situations and it's interesting when we think of when you think about that. It's like, uh, well, you're not trapped, you know, you could have left at any time. You but but had they you feel not, right. Had you not gone to that uh, hotel room, would uh, the your associate have come after you in some way? I, or would it have just been Well, let's not forget that I went to the hotel room willingly because yeah. I thought a dr- I was going to make money selling cocaine. Yeah. So, um no, he wouldn't I don't think he would have. Yeah. I, I have okay. no clue what he would have done, but I didn't I went there under false pretenses. Nathan, anything else you got? Uh no, I just think that uh, it's important to make decisions for yourself and try to try to select the people that you associate with based on your values and and not necessarily because it can always be this extreme, but um, I think of all the situations where you can you can kind of miss out or things can go wrong. Um, being associated with someone who's being accused of murder is probably the most extreme. It's definitely true that uh, being very careful about who you associate with is important. I thank you, Nathan, for the call tonight. Let's go to James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. James. Hey, Mr. Mark. 
Yes, sir. Speaking of being an antagonist, I've, I became addicted to talk radio, and I've been a talk radio head following what you framed, a legitimate military attack. And I have been taken on the public radio thousands of times and been called everything under the sun, from Lionel Show Call Me the Greatest to an ex-com man, Congressman J.D. Hayworth Call Me a Piece of Human. Well, I know this is a family radio show, so I won't Please don't. continue yeah. with what he called me. <laughs> but, but given your tirade against me yesterday, Mark, I should like you to know that I've never, ever, not even once, ever asked anyone on earth if they heard me on the radio. But I have had numerous friends and associates say, hey, Whit, I heard you on the Diane Reem show the other day. Or, Whit, I love when you're on the Michael Medved show. Or uh, when I call him as Jim Bob, that was hilarious to all my friends. When they run and cross paths with me, they t tell me how they couldn't stop laughing. But so the numerous, and I've even numerous times been by different radio stations invited me to come in as a guest host. And I've declined every time because they're not willing to pay me. So I won't do that. I won't waste my time. But, Ian, I Hold just on, James. We'll let you get to your point here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I think he's referring to you suggesting he get his own talk show. Uh, I didn't call yesterday. that a tirade. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, 
Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to bring up whatever's on your mind. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. More on the, or some, we haven't even really scratched the surface of the story, just kind of teased it. Uh, Glenn Greenwald's blog over at firstlook.org, The Intercept, has a, a new article, and it's fairly lengthy. We'll just give you a, kind of the, a, a summary, a briefing, if you will, uh, about Barack Obama's secret terrorist tracking system as released a classified government document by someone who is not Edward Snowden, apparently. Someone else. We'll uh, continue, or we'll get into that here in a moment. We've also got uh, James on the line in Arizona, and we'll get back to him as well. But first... If you're interested, if you've ever been interested in sort of taking one of those outdoor survival courses, you need to know about the Survival Training School of California, because this is the best one, arguably the best uh, survival training school in the world. Because mainly because of uh, Thomas Coyne, the uh, the lead instructor over there, and his uh, long list of uh, of accreditations. But they've actually trained uh, trained people from the U.S. Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training Center, and from the Air Force, and from the Navy. Um, I mean, you know, if your survival school is training people from three different uh, divisions of uh, the U.S. military. You gotta say it's probably pretty qualified. I've got uh, right here in my hand uh, from Al J. Mercer, commanding officer, VX 31 U.S. Navy. The strength and supremacy of today's Navy and Marine Corps stems in large measure from the outstanding quality of the training provided to our men and women. Your expert delivery of the sa- of life-saving information will undoubtedly benefit VX 31 and support them for years to come. Again, please accept my personal thanks for a job well done. You know, they dishing out praise, and and I'm holding letters upon letters of recommendation for the Survival Training School of California. They've got um, classes. Just go take a look at all the classes that are available coming up. This is their full-time job. They do a fantastic job of it. It's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. Please, if you any have any interest, just go to the website and take a look at some of the videos they've got there. They've been featured on uh, ABC, CBS, uh, KCAL, Men's Fitness, the Toronto Star, the LA Times. Uh, they were part of Brad Pitt's World War Z um, in the DVD extras. So it's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com, 805-503-8861. CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com, 805-503-8861. All right, let's continue here. James is on the line in Arizona. James, you didn't have really enough time to get your thoughts out there, so go ahead. Actually, I, I did on uh, the original point I did, I just wanted to respond to what I call a tirade. You can call it whatever you want, Mark, well, while you're ranting about me after I, my call was done. Can I respond to that? To that? Well, hold on, James, before you go it on. Just to be clear, this is where you were, You after your call was over, uh, Mark made a comment about how he thinks you should have your own talk show. That seems like, you know, a, that doesn't sound like a compliment. To that. I, I didn't respond to that, actually. I was responding to him saying that I call my friends and did you hear all the mysteries I was I've never once mentioned I don't talk politics to anybody unless they bring up the subject to me ever I'm not that type of guy but I do do it on I'm not I am want to do that with people that say a lot of things on public airwaves that I don't agree with and they call their show show free talk live talk about whatever you want so I wanted to mention to you last night that it was it's just been recently marked the 102nd anniversary of Milton Friedman's birth and uh, apparently you don't remember me mentioning free to choose as being what had certain, using your words, resonance to me as for why I claim to be a libertarian, using somebody else's words. Uh, Mark, 
But I should like to say also that Milton Friedman make fun of his grandson's uh, seasteading idea as much as I did yours, being in communion with it. It's ludicrous. Well, you don't know but, what Milton Friedman uh, would make fun of and what he wouldn't. I mean, I don't know whether he'd make fun of his I'm, grandsons. I can tell you his I, his son is definitely not. David Friedman, it doesn't seem, you know, seems to think it's a you know fine idea. What's, hold on, before you go on, what is seasteading? Seasteading is the idea of uh, humans moving out on platforms in the water, essentially moving away from uh, monopolistic city-states and uh, nation-states on the land and attempting to create competition for governance out on the water where they, uh, you know, creating new area because there's no way, there's no pioneers any so, longer. So, James, you are a critic of the, uh, the seasteading? Mark, can I ask you a question in response to that question? Because they will frame the frame this whole I, this whole notion I have about your guest, your, your business partner. Uh, do you not remember talking about this only a month ago? And you had like an entire show talking about it with Ian. And since he seems to ha have some kind of memory loss about that, what would you think would be the cause of that? James, I'm going to put you on hold for a moment here while I explain radio to you. Uh, so. <clears throat> There are always new listeners when you're broadcasting on the radio, not only because we have new radio stations coming on at all times, but, but people also, are turning on their car radios at all different times. Right. Anybody can be tuning in at any time. So it's not that I don't know. When I ask Mark, what is seasteading? It's not that I don't it's a know what seasteading is. That's me stopping the conversation as trying to put myself in the shoes of a listener who may not have ever heard this show before and try to explain better for them what we're talking about. In the same way that if somebody lets off with some three-letter acronym like uh, the NAP, I'll almost always stop down. If I notice it, I'll say, well, well you mean the non-aggression principle, and maybe even give a brief explanation of what that means. So, James, I'm well aware of what seasteading is, but many of them uh, in our audience may not had, have had that information. So go ahead. Well, I'm deeply sorry that I... Uh accuse you of smoking too much and that uh, I forgive forgive me for uh, suggesting otherwise. You're Mark, forgiven. Go my ahead. My point is, yeah, I believe Milton Friedman certainly would make fun of that idea, just like I was able to destroy the idea as to who are you going to call? You never did answer that question. Uh, if uh, little Vladimir Putin rises out of the, let's say you're floating around the Black Sea and he pulls up on you. In well, a sub, I, I would be concerned with Vladimir Putin if I was uh, floating around the Black Sea. But if I was in the Gulf of Mexico, right. it'd be the United States that I'd be worried about. Right. You, no, you call the United States because the United States – oh, whatever. Okay. So uh, you said <laughs> – By the uh, way, James, we agree okay, on this whatever, one. Ian. I, I, right. Ian, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Wow. What's for once? But I wanted to go. say uh, you said, well, Bastia and uh, couldn't, you couldn't remember who else, but it was Milton Friedman. But where do you believe in the principles of liberty? Where? Because I never did get to answer that question, nor do I know what you were talking about, because, of course, you posted after my call was done. So for the benefit of the audience and me, what do you mean when you say that I'm not a libertarian and I don't believe in the principles of liberty? And don't talk about the war thing, because uh, the non-aggression principle is your libertarian principle, not mine, nor is it any other libertarians that I know. So you're a libertarian right, who doesn't principle. subscribe to the non-aggression principle is what you're saying? In the context of war, it was what I'm saying. In Evil needs to be confronted in this earth, and it is all over the earth right now. So by definition, you're not a libertarian, and, and don't right? Stop. I am a libertarian, and I know that the evildoers in this earth don't respond to stick-ups with pot and flowers. They, but they do respond to stick-ups with guns and ammo. And this world is overflowing well, with people that want you As far you as I'm concerned, everybody and listening Mark can make up their own me. mind. I'm putting you on hold again. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, anybody listening can make up their own mind. To me, a libertarian is someone who embraces the non-aggression principle across the board with without exception. Uh, but Mark, I think he was asking you, so go ahead with your answer. Well, I would <laughs> – to me what's important is, is um, as far as it is, is that the non-aggression principle is, is you don't use force, fraud, or theft – uh, you don't initiate. Uh, excuse me. You, you you don't attack somebody to get what you want. You don't initiate force, fraud, or theft in order to get what you want, and that means most of the wars in U.S. history are. It, it's not appropriate to have uh, have responded in in that way. So, like for instance, when the United States puts a an embargo on Japan for oil, the United States is initiating force on U.S. business people that say they can't deal with Japan. James, you're back on. Go ahead. 
I agree with everything you said, Mark, up until the point you talked about the United States issuing an, an oil embargo around it, uh, what I've repeatedly had to remind you and your audience, obviously, in the context of the 19, early 1940s, that the Japanese uh, was J Japan was literally an evil empire. They were genocidal, mass murdering, raping, and pillaging in China. And if you think that it, it, it's a violation of free market principles not to sell oil to a mass murdering total war state that... Well, if you uh, don't want to sell oil to them, you shouldn't sell oil to them. But to have the government come in and force people to stop selling oil is the use of force. That's initiation of force against those businesses. Thanks, James. More coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. And HB Extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB Extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 Bottles 30 Days Summer Giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contest banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 Bottle 30 Days Summer Giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Free Talk Live. Well, I'm a working police officer. I'm actually on duty in a small town in Central Texas. I've been doing this job 10 years. 99% of what you guys talk about is dead on. We got guys getting into this profession just to wear a badge and play God. Mm. It's getting worse and worse. There used to be a couple of decent guys that I worked with. Both of them have quit. Why did they quit? Well, it's because of the BS. We can't help the people that actually need help, which is what you get into this job to do if you're, if you're a good person. It's interesting that whenever honest cops call in like you, we get the same story, that the corruption rises through the ranks, that the good guys, the guys like you that got in to make a difference and actually help people and catch the real bad guys, the guys like you end up getting frustrated by the system, frustrated by the corruption and the bureaucracy, and they end up quitting, which of course means that more bad guys can move in and move up through the ranks. Is anything that, that, inaccurate about that? No, sir. That's my point entirely. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot -E -E com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This 
is Free Talk Live. Moments remain right here. You can just dial right on in here and get in the remaining uh, moments of the show this evening. But if you don't get in tonight, well, we can always have you back tomorrow. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype into the show. Username here is lrn.fm. By the way, you do have to send a contact request first, else calling us on Skype will not work. So send that request to username lrn.fm. It will be approved usually in about a show segment once we finally notice it and hit the accept button. So you can join us in whatever way you prefer. And here's the news from the uh, First Look website, firstlook.org slash The Intercept. It's Glenn Greenwald's site, his new site that he put together after leaving uh, the Guardian over in the UK, and of course, for those of you who may not have uh, been paying close attention, the Edward Snowden revelations from last summer were broken by Glenn Greenwald. Uh, he's sort of been the go-to guy for all of the NSA news about sure is, yeah, uh, about how your privacy is apparently not intact in any way, shape, or form with the NSA around, and of course, all this information had come from Edward Snowden. But things apparently are changing now. More people are feeling comfortable coming out and leaking information. Or, That's the thing about leakers. They can uh, create more. I guess I shouldn't say coming out because this leaker is anonymous at this point uh, publicly. Greenwald may know who it is, but uh, he's not revealing it. Nearly half of the people on the U.S. government's widely shared database of terrorist suspects are not connected to any known terrorist group, according to classified government documents obtained by The Intercept. Of the 680,000 people caught up in the government's terrorist screening database, a watch list of, quote, known or suspected terrorists, unquote, that is shared with local law enforcement agencies, private contractors, and foreign governments, more than 40% of those 680,000 are described by the government as having no recognized terrorist group affiliation. That category, 280,000 people, dwarfs the number of watch-listed people suspected of ties to al-Qaeda, Hamas, and Hezbollah combined. The documents obtained from a source in the intelligence community, not Edward Snowden, also reveal that the Obama administration has presided over an unprecedented expansion of the terrorist screening system. Since taking office, Obama has boosted the number of people on the no-fly list more than tenfold to an all-time high of 47,000. Imagine what this is like being on the no-fly list. It sucks. You simply can't fly. You're stuck on wherever you, you are. the same name as someone who has a terrorist sus- I don't think that happens nearly as much as it um, did, but l- he's... Increase 10 times so the people can't fly. What are the criteria? Do we have 10 times as many terrorists as we did at 9-11? He is surpassing the number of uh, number of people barred from flying under George W. Bush. If everything is terrorism, then nothing is terrorism, says David Gomez, former senior FBI special agent. The watch listing system, he adds, is revving out of control. The classified documents were prepared by the National Counterterrorism Center, the lead agency for tracking individuals with suspected links to international terrorism, stamped secret and no foreign, indicating that they are not to be shared with foreign governments. They offer the most complete numerical picture of the watch listing system to date. Among the revelations, point. The second highest concentration of people designated as known or suspected terrorists by the government is in Dearborn, Michigan, a city of 96,000 that has the largest percentage of Arab American residents in the country. Point. The government adds names to its databases or adds information on existing subjects at a rate of 900 records each day. Another point. The CIA wow. uses a previously unknown program codenamed Hydra. What's a Hydra, Mark? Hydra is something that you cut the head off of and uh, two heads grow back. To secretly access databases maintained by foreign countries and extract data to add to the watch list. So they're accessing other countries' databases without their con- those countries' permission. I bet they like that. And just sucking information out. The U.S. counterterrorism official familiar with the watch listing data told The Intercept that as of November of 2013, there were about 700,000 people in the Terrorist Screening Database, or TSDB, but declined to provide the current numbers. Last month, the Associated Press, citing federal court filings by government lawyers, reported there have been 1.5 million names added to the watch list over the past five years. The government official told The Intercept that was a misinterpretation of the data, saying the list has grown somewhat since that time, but it's nowhere near the 1.5 million figure uh, that is being reported by the news. He added the statistics cited by the AP do not just include nominations of individuals, but also bits of intelligence or biographical information obtained on watch-listed persons. 
When U.S. officials refer to the watch list, they typically mean the terrorist screening database, an unclassified pool of information shared across the intelligence community and military as well as local law enforcement, foreign governments, and private contractors. According to the government's watch listing guidelines published by The Intercept last month, officials don't need concrete facts or irrefutable evidence to secretly place someone on the list. Only a vague and elastic standard of reasonable suspicion. You need some fact basis to say a guy's a terrorist that you know is a, that you know to a probable cause standard that he's a terrorist, says Gomez, a former FBI agent. Then I say, build a big file as you can on him. But if you just suspect that somebody is a terrorist, not so much. The National Counterterrorism Center did not respond to questions about its terrorist screening system. Instead, in a statement, it praised the watch listing system as a, quote, critical layer in our counterterrorism defenses. What else unquote, would it say? And described it as superior to the pre-9-11 process for tracking threats, which relied on lists which were typed or handwritten in card catalogs and ledgers. The White House declined to comment. Most people placed on the government's watch list begin in a larger classified system known as the Terrorist Identities Data Mart Environment, or TIDE. The Not TIDE with this at all. database actually allows for targeting of people based on far less evidence than the already lack standards for placing people on the watch list. A more expansive and invasive database, TIDE's information is shared across the U.S. intelligence community as well as with commando units from Special Operations Command with domestic agencies such as the New York City Police Department. In the summer of 2013, officials celebrated what one classified document prepared by the Counterterrorism Center referred to as a milestone, boosting the number of the people in the TIDE database to a total of one million, wow. up from half a million four years earlier. The document credits that historic achievement to the DTI, the Directorate of Terrorist Identities, a secretive and virtually unknown U.S. counterterrorism unit unknown to me. Yeah, responsible for maintaining TIDE. This number is a testament to DTI's hard work and dedication over the past 2.5 years, the document declares. So these are people who aren't quite on the watch list, but they're still under suspicion of possibly maybe being put on the watch list at some point You're in the future. You're Muslim stuff. The number is also a testament to the Obama administration's intensified collection of personal information on individuals with suspected links to terrorism. In 06, CBS News obtained a copy of the no-fly list and reported that it included 47,000 names, including Bolivian President Evo Morales and the head of Lebanon's parliament. Faced with a widespread public backlash, the government cut the list down to 4,000 names by late 2009. The next year, after the so-called underwear bomber tried to bring down a commercial airliner bound for Detroit, Obama loosened the criteria for adding people to the no-fly list, and the impact was immediate. Since 2010, the classified documents note that the uh, Counterterrorism Center has created more than 430,000 terrorism-related person records, while deleting only 50,000 people whose nexus to terrorism was refuted or did not meet current uh, watchlisting criteria. The documents reveal that more than 240 tied nominations are now processed Every single day. Once you're dealing with numbers like that, getting off that list is going to be impossible. Yeah, they don't make it easy, and there's no real process uh, to get get off these lists. Uh, as of August 2013, 5,000 Americans were on the... Let's see here. This is tied by... Uh, an August 2013 slide from the Counterterrorism Center called Tied by the Numbers lays out the scope of the watchlisting system. 680,000 people have been watchlisted. 320,000 are monitored in the larger Tide database. And as of August 2013, 5,000 Americans were on the watchlist, while another 15,800 were targeted in Tide. So it's gone up dramatically, it sounds like, uh, in recent times. 16,000 people including 1,200 Americans have been classified as selectees who are targeted for enhanced screenings at airports and border processing. I've been on that list. Yes, you uh, have. The 611,000 men are on the main terrorist watch list and 39,000 women and on and on. We'll give you the uh, details on this on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Roger's in Michigan listening to WJNL. Hey, Roger. Guys, um... <laughs> Amazing. You guys are amazing. Um, as long as we're on this earth and there's two people, there's going to be conflict. Sure. Agreed. Irregardless of what you say, whatever, boom, boom, there's going to be conflict. I go back to the Adam Neve thing. Um, but thank God, or thank whoever, that we live in America and we can express these views freely uh, without re repercussion. 
and uh, we are blessed. I don't think we realize how lucky we are. And I hear all what you're saying about no fly and all this stuff like that. But we are American. Well, here in America, you have the right to complain, but you may not have the right to fly. Well, I'll tell you what, Roger. I want. I <laughs> wish I could give you more time tonight. We're out of it. Call tomorrow at the beginning of the show, 7 o'clock Eastern, whether we're on in Petoskey at that time or not. I want to talk to you further about this, about what you have to say. And I thank you for the call tonight. We'll see you then. FreeTalkLive.com. Amer- did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now, and every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,289, silver opened at $20.13, and Bitcoin is trading around $581. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, after Israeli forces bombed a United Nations school in Gaza, the United States called the attack disgraceful and encouraged Israel to work harder to prevent civilian casualties. The bombing happened Wednesday last week, leading U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Paskey to call for an investigation into the attacks. On Monday, the Israeli government and Hamas accepted a 72-hour ceasefire brokered by the Egyptian government. The current conflict has been raging for nearly a month. On Tuesday afternoon, the Houston City Council will once again hear arguments from supporters and opponents of ride-sharing services such as Uber and Lyft. The companies allow customers to request rides via smartphone apps and are currently not subject to the same fees as traditional taxis. In recent weeks, the issue has been tabled numerous times with heated debate coming from both sides. Taxi cab drivers and supporters have flooded City Hall in yellow shirts asking City Council to impose similar fees and regulations on the ride-sharing companies. If the measure is not tabled again, a vote will take place Wednesday morning. Saturday, August 9th, the Brave New Books join the Alliance of Austin Agoras as they host Catherine Bleich, Justin and Jessica Armand, and Tracy Ward, four Central Texas residents who have had relative success enterprising Agoras Ventures. Agorism is revolutionary market anarchism, and this bunch does more than talk the anarchist talk, they live it. Join the community from 6 until 10 o'clock this Saturday at Austin's Brave New Books for an open discussion on what it takes to find freedom in an unfree world. The event will also feature an agorist farmer's market. So come early and participate in the counter-economy. It's this Saturday, August 9th, 6 until 10, 
as the Alliance of Austin Agorists hosts Catherine Bleich, Justin and Jessica Armand, and Tracy Ward at Austin's Brave New Books. Support comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons, 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. According to an article released by BenSwan.com, C-SPAN's Washington Journal invited the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, Richard Gage, to be a guest for an entire segment dedicated to the collapse of World Trade Center 7. Gage's group includes over 2,200 architects and engineers that have discovered evidence contrary to the official report by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. The official report concluded that World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. Richard Gage stated live on C-SPAN that 40,000 tons of steel cannot fall due to an office fire. World Trade Center 7 fell at the speed of free fall, straight down, uniformly, and symmetrically. An impossibility without controlled demolition. All 80 columns would have had to have been removed simultaneously for a building to fall like this. No steel frame structure has ever fallen from a fire. Gage told C-SPAN that the official story of 9-11 could not be true and is calling for a real investigation. A Guatemalan court has ruled in favor of indigenous Mayan communities in the municipality of Supacapa, declaring that local governments must consult the communities before granting any mining permits. The Mayan Council of Sipacaba held a press conference July 23rd discussing the details of the victory. According to the council, the judgment means the Guatemalan government must respect the indigenous people's right to information and consultation in accordance with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and International Labor Organization Convention 169. Based on the judgment, at least one of the current mining excavations is illegal and must be withdrawn. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's. Non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is William Chambers. Now a retired insurance salesman, Chambers is just one of over 95% of grandfathers who, according to a new report from the Center of Business Intelligence, secured their first and only job by walking right up to the owner of a business and asking for a position right then and there. I slammed my fist on the desk and said, I'm your man. He stood right up. He shook my hand and he said, you come in first thing Monday morning. According to the report, nearly 36% of grandfathers claim that they found employment by entering a local business with nothing but a nickel in their pockets and a shirt on their backs. 24% saw a fine looking marquee for a business and said, someday my name's going to be on that sign. And 40% of grandfathers said they snuck into the CEO's office and said, Mr. McKinley, sir, I'm your guy. It just took gumption. You didn't need some fancy internship looking the boss dead in the eye and showing him you were a man. That was your internship. This is the Onion News Network.